Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We got game number two going to be coming out here now. Sync Esports versus Reason Gaming here, the winning bracket finals for cycle number eight, of course. Again, uh, starting earlier uh, earlier today, and uh, usually, again, this wouldn't be the later matchup, but uh, because of uh, the reschedule, being the earlier one, again, the loser's bracket round three of Willow Keeper versus Nullstone Gaming is definitely set to happen later on today, or... Wait a second, it's Will or yeah, Will Keeper versus Nullstone Gaming. Just uh, double check on that. As you can see on the brackets right there of uh, what what they look like currently. So that'll be the later match here uh, today, set for the normal time at 12 p.m. Eastern, 1800 Central European time. But anyways, back to this one here, and uh, well, already uh, you know interesting stuff to start things off once again for game number two. You know, you pointed out and it definitely being the Legion side could help them a little bit, and sure enough, they do get mm -hmm. Dr. Repulsor. With that first pick here. The uh, Swift Blade, by the way, was one of the two bands here with the Tremble Swift Blade coming out from Reason. So, And then it's in sync, uh, Burn the Wall Beast so yeah. that Reason could pick up. Otherwise, I think Reason would have picked up uh, Wall Beast instead of Dr. Repulsor. But now they probably get best of both worlds because now that they not give Swift Blade to sync, they can get Dr. Repulsor for not the biggest of trades. Like Kraken and Philly are obviously good, but uh, Doctor, I think, is a little bit more. And uh, more pick up. I actually really like this pick up here. Um, from Sync, Behemoth. Uh, hi. We've seen Niz Behemoth. Well, <laughs> I, okay, we haven't. Well, you haven't seen Niz, but man, Niz, uh, like, in terms of initiation, can be incredibly godly and can do so much work in team fights. And if the Insane is on point with what it says Arcane Vortexes, then you know you can take um, Nier out of the game, like just in terms of that one skill. So, looking forward to sort of see the clutch plays from Insane. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, that's, uh, we, we've we seen some very impressive Moyer play before. I want to say it was even in the hands of uh, Willow Keeper, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and uh, they, uh, it, it was just crazy. Last cycle, just how impactful that ultimate can be if used appropriately. The Arcane Vortex, and yeah, stopping the initiations. I think in that game specifically happened to have a Soul Stealer especially, and just really screwed him over. So, yeah, Behemoth, a similar idea, definitely, as you're pointing out there. Again, in the hands of Nier, there's been a lot of talk, a lot of hype. Hell, this is a hero that's even banned against Reason Gaming, as yeah, we saw exactly. last week and going into the initial pick. So, definitely some good respect there. We're going to get to get an idea of uh, uh, perhaps of how powerful it truly is. But, uh, yeah, excited to see that. You know, that also goes back to, you, you look at the initial bounce again, Nymphora being one of those. So, it's that idea. Would they, would you rather ban Nymphora or Behemoth if you're the opposition uh, to just we comfort heroes? But... Yeah, we talked about in the interview, didn't we? I said, oh, who, who would you ban against yourself, like Nymphora or the Behemoth? And he said, both are godly, so you got to choose between one or the other, you know. Um, but I think in actually in this matchup here, I think Behemoth has the slight advantage over Mora, because obviously the uh, was the Shockwave is instant. Obviously the Mora Arcane Vortex has like a slight animation delay. Um, and because of that, Behemoth has the slight advantage. Like when we saw it, I think it was against Soul Silla, like you said, Breaky, Arcane Vortex is a little bit quicker than the uh, the Soul Burst from Soul Silla. So uh, in just in this matchup in itself, I think Behemoth won't have the slight advantage because obviously Behemoth could, should be able to stun before Arcane Vortex comes out. Mm -hmm. Oh, you see the uh, the bands finishing up here. One more to go, and then we will be good to go. In fact, there we go. Uh, the bands, though, on, in total, keeping the force: Bubbles, Magmus, Chipper, Pebbles, and Deadwood. Happening. Deadwood, another one of these heroes, has definitely been making a strong splash here on the scene. Of course, 3.6 got some good buffs, and and with some outside advice. <laughs> As I keep going back to, definitely teams have uh, big showing interest in him. And Reason Gaming at top of the list as far as liking to play him. So uh, going to take away that option here. Does Sink Esports. So we'll see where Reason Gaming goes. Again, they already got their support and secondary support, really. I mean, I, I assume that's what they, yeah, near being the secondary support player. So Oh, yeah, yeah. And of course. Uh, please no. Please no more cool behemoth BMG, please. Just do, it just doesn't right. work, guys. It just doesn't work. Like. Yeah, we saw that in the hands of KG last week. Again, they finished in that seventh, eighth place spot. So, uh, again, no, no gold division to drop down to. But, uh, you know, with that said, if Reason Gaming or Nullstone Gaming, what, or, yeah, Reason, or, yes, Reason Gaming or Nullstone Gaming, if one of those two teams win this cycle, they would actually be third place overall. And that's definitely, you know, strong going into what would be the playoffs. Wow, that one coming out of left field, Midas for Reason Gaming. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I talked about it in the last game when they run uh, the Vindicator solid mid. I said like, he's, you know, Vindicator is not obviously above us or Midas. He doesn't have that escape mechanism. And Midas actually is a very, very good uh, solo mid. Like because if he faces a one v one, he still handles himself fine. And one v two, I think he, arguably he handles himself even better because uh, he can trade harass 
uh, very, very well with the supports and get a lot of last hits with the Q&W, which you would get anyway. So you know, you'd prefer the enemy to try and lock you down with extra resources that you would normally get if you if they spent less resources on you kind of thing. So uh, 1v2, I think, minus probably in particularly in the middle brawl uh, will work even better. He can work suicide, but I think with the elemental warp being kind of a, a small or uh, yeah, not like the, not the biggest range, uh, only 700 range, uh, obviously the middle lane matchup is kind of a, a smaller length to run back to your tower than the top lane. Yeah. So, sort of, he sort of excels in the middle lane a little bit better, um, and yeah, it can work here as well. Um, obviously, there's going to be a lot of push here from Sync. Affiliates already picked up, and Minus has one of the best um, counter pushing abilities with um, all three of his spells. So, yeah, nice pick up here from Reason. <laughs> you see beef right there. Bust now. He's, he's stepping in for Quincy, who's still on vacation. He should be returning. I believe he's he's uh, supposed to be back for the playoffs, which start this next week. But uh, in, in the due time, we have the great beef and uh, providing us with this awesome stats. Midas has never faced off against Moira before. That's... I, it, it, it probably doesn't even know, <laughs> man. Like, that's just a made No, that, it, it's one of those. It's a very obvious one, <laughs> to be fair. So just just making it clear, though. Uh, yeah. you, you know, go, going back to Moira, oh, wow, yeah. There's the Jeraziah. So recent game, we know to do this lately as well. I, I want to go back to Moira real quickly. A Sandwraith, holy crap. I want to get this point out, though. Uh, Moira also, you know, we're talking about the Arcane Vortex, the power of that counter tool. But again, the Mana Sunder definitely is going to come into play this game. Mm -hmm. uh, there's yeah. a lot of options, you know, not only the Midas, especially even that Jerizai behemoth would be great, but Doctor Repulsor, of course, is the, is oh, the yeah. obvious one there oh, man, with the uh, with the mana sender. Yeah, so yeah. you know that, that's that's always talked about as being a great yeah, counter yeah. to a Doctor Repulsor. So this is interesting, man. I I'm intrigued to yeah. see how this game plays out, especially with the final pick Sandry. That also kind of came out of nowhere. It feels like did they um, run, did they run no, Sandry last week? Or no, somebody? Did. Yeah, they did. They did. They did. They lost the game. I think. I believe in it. Um, no, I, to be fair, I thought I was going to pick Sandwraith, and I was going to say a break, but I didn't want to interrupt you. Um, I thought I was going to pick Sandwraith, or what was the other hero I had in mind? Uh, the reason being to pick up the Sandwraith is just because um, it's a, a great inherent um, Null Fire Blade carrier. You're playing against Jerozai, you have to pick up a Null Fire Blade, and obviously, oh, I was going to say Mad Man actually, but I didn't pick up Mad Man. Anyway, um, Sandwraith is a great hero though, because obviously, inherent Null Fire Blade carrier, and like I said, if you play against Jerozai, you just have to have one. Like That, that hero breaky is. Like, in team fights in particular, like, he's just too strong. Honestly, like, you, like, you pick that hero and you just automatically win team fights if you don't have a way to really deal with it. Mm -hmm. And now Fireblade is obviously the best way to deal with it. And particularly with Doctor Pulse as well, like, he, he, like, like, I've said it time and time again, Breaky, before, like, whenever you play a Doctor Pulse, so you kind of want to pick up maybe the, the two mana items, like maybe, like, the Icon and then maybe, like, a Health Flower. But in some games, you sometimes see like the Doctor Pulse is forced to run or forced to um, get a Shrunken Head early, like maybe Icon straight into Shrunken Head. But with Jerozaya, you can go Icon into Health Flight because you've got the, the Protective Charm. Like that acts as your Shrunken Head. So it allows you to sort of go a change in skill, or sorry, change in Iron build, and just makes the hero even more strong. So um, this Null Fireblade carrier from Sandroth is um, very much in need. Yeah. This game. You know, uh, th this honestly kind of just hit me, but you've seen an Ophelia over here as well. Isn't there a creep? Like, I think it's the Vagabond Assassin that has yeah, a purge it's, ability. It has the purge. So yeah. I wonder if that, that's even yeah. something. I mean, I know it doesn't have the most life. Like, it's very yeah, squishy. Yeah, it has 200. Okay. It has two 200 or 250, which is going to die to like one Fisher from Behemoth, which yeah. is just like, so really... that's the one issue. I mean, it, it can work, and I think, I think the only person I've seen do it was Jesse, but like that guy on Ophelia was like another level, so... Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's just one of those things. It's like it's, it's pretty doable, and I think if I think I'd like to see it, whether it works or not, I would like to see it, to sort of see if it could work. But um, it's one of those things. It's it's more risky than having like um, um, a skeleton king that goes through repel anyway. Yeah, for one second. That's true. But it's just one of those things. It's like it can it can pay off really well, or it can backfire because it's just gonna die instantly. So, um, but I'd like to see it at least once to sort of see if it could work. So this Midas though, man, Midas uh, being played by Embry here. Going to be interesting to see how he plays out. Now, top lane, you got Jerizaiah. Obviously, some good harassment off the bat coming out from Moira. Uh, she did go the shard to Harkon first. I'm not going to be applying that mana burn necessarily in the early. But, I mean, Jerizaiah, he's, yeah, he's, he's having to deal with this Moira quite a bit. She is a very effective babysit here. I think you can safely say, you know, she provides oh, yeah, a definitely. good stun. She has some good solid range. What is it, 550? Yeah, so... Uh, Good armor as well, 3.5, pretty yeah. decent, higher than Sandro for level 1, so, yeah, um, and the shards of Harkon, as you said, is really good, and against, like, heroes, like, even Bubbles, for example, the uh, the Mana Sunder can do so much work, and I really like what Sync have done here with the lanes, again, like, Sync, obviously in game 1, they had 
perfect lanes in this game. I think they've set up their lanes perfectly as well. Because if Moira wasn't here, then she'd be mid. And like I said before, Midas is one of those heroes that I think excels 1v2, then he does 1v1. Because I think Midas would get the same farm whether he's 1v1 or 1v2. And so obviously you don't want to commit a resource when you're not shutting down the Midas. Whereas in this game, obviously, if he's not top, then Jerozai is going to be 1v1 against the Sandwraith. And Jerozai is incredibly strong 1v1 against Melees in particular because of the inner liar. Whereas with Moira here, you know, he can sort of stack the pool, he can box out Jerozai and make sure he doesn't have a good time and, you know, give Sam Ray free farm, which is obviously good. So. Yeah. You see Nier like here, lanes. he's taking advantage of the creep pull. He's already level three as a result of that, so, yeah, doing it uh, very, very well again, or getting an idea, or will get an idea again of how powerful this Nier behemoth can be very possibly. Midas, level three right here, you know, has that ability to get that level four ultimate, and I think she, you know, uh, she's definitely a hero. You know, unlike Revenant, you, you, I, I, even with that change, you may not necessarily get it at level four. Uh, Midas, you definitely get it at level four. I mean, having that uh, yeah. much more damage yeah. and the stun uh, capability, of course, pretty important, so. Oh. Yeah, normally, normally the normal spec is max out, um, Normally, the, oh, he hasn't. He hasn't he doesn't gone the get level. It as I say that, okay. I'm really surprised though because normally in lane the transmit's really good because you can just all you want really is the max Q. I was gonna say normally in lane you max the Q and have obviously one point in E. So you know if you do need to get out, you know if you're in like a bad position you can just E out for example, and then you max the transmit because it just makes like you know, overall just stronger because you you're not gonna use W in lane ever because it's too weak kind of thing. Yeah. But 75 damage at level one and 30 heal is just not useful. Whereas um. Yeah, you know, if he maxes out the the transmit, he can go for potential kills with Elemental Warp and Q. But whatever, I think he's gonna get level five Golden Salvo still. Because oh, sorry, the next rank goes because it, it's just your clear creep wave and sort of harassment potential. So mm -hmm. yeah, just a little bit strange, I guess. I mean, the transmute obviously is only good if you have you know good levels in other your spells as well. So, but either yeah. way. Um, I think the ult E change was kind of good when you're playing support Midas, because obviously you can get it early enough and you get the stun, which as a support is really important early on levels, but yeah. I guess in a core you want to get later. Oh, top, top lane, lane. lane. Ephemeral Forge going to go behind Jerzai right there, the cutoff with the Skeleton King, they got a great angle on it, will it be enough for the kill? Yes, it will. Zap gets credit with the Bloodlust kill on Ophelia, so yeah, you know, they tried it, they tried about a minute ago, they weren't able to do it. But it goes to show you, you know, the, the perseverance from Sinky Esports. Like, you know, just because it didn't work the first time doesn't mean it won't work uh, the second time. And uh, this is just a good angles coming out from the great communication against Lab coming from the river that time instead of the lane they get the kill. Immo Boy, though, picks up a kill on a Keizu at the bottom lane. And Glacius there to assist him. So a uh, quick counter kill shortly after that bloodless kill went out from yeah. Ophelia right there. So well played. It was just the um, same story. Both suicides overextended a little bit. Um, and then Keizu just... Dropped to the uh, combo from Dr. Pulsar and Glacius, really, just as simple as. The Behemoth wasn't even involved in that engagement. But. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we haven't really talked too much about this second support uh, Behemoth, but he's actually doing pretty decent. He's the same level as Ophelia, although he doesn't have the same GPM miss because he obviously didn't get the kill whereas Ophelia did. Um, and whenever you run a secondary support, um, normally you always want to have the second supports having an impact on lane, whether they're roaming and ganking or getting at least the same farm as the jungler. In this case, he's getting the same farm as jungler, so he doesn't really need to have an impact in the lane. Um, 240, that's probably about as much farm as Ophelia would have, you know, if he didn't get the kill or the first blood. So, um, yeah, I think Nier's doing fine as well. He's going to have more pressure on the bottom lane as well, so I think he's doing fine. He, he might, I think the biggest thing with Behemoth is getting the portal key and obviously getting the level 6. Because without that, you know, you can shut up a couple of kills with Fisher, for example, but he's gone the Nier farming build where he's maxed the heavyweight instead of the Fisher, so he pretty wants to just AFK farm and instead of have impact in lanes. So, And I don't see any... Like anything bad about it, really. He's just gonna keep on farming, which is uh, which is fine, honestly. He's gonna try and prioritize that that portal key as, as early as possible. Yeah. Uh, don't say anything about that. It, it does take, a, you know, it, it's just a different way to play for sure. I mean, this could most certainly, and it's safe to say again, he knows what he's doing on this here because he just hears oh, yeah, so much definitely. about it. But it, it, you are, it, it does take away from the, the the scary presence of him setting up, you know, with the gank with that oh, fissure yeah, stun as well. So uh, sure, it still stuns quite effectively and still has a range, but you know, minimal damage as a result it's of being level one currently. So. It's, it's just the, the um, I think he's playing like in competitive scene. Like if it was like in TMM, he'd obviously max the Fisher because you know you're gonna set up a lot more kills. Whereas in a competitive game, you know reliability is key. Farming yeah. like the jungle is reliable farm. Trying to set up kills that you might not get can backfire horribly. Like if he doesn't get a kill, then he'll be like level two, or level three. But now the reliable farm, at least he's level five. Um, and you know it's all about reliability kind of thing in competitive scene. <laughs> so yeah, it's good. 
They're clearly trying to set something up here middle lane. Uh, Jerzy, not most, not the most aggressive ganking hero, though, so not much. He's going to reach to the oh, table, I wouldn't think. Bottom lane, though, Dr. Pulsar chases down Feral, but here comes Yara with the ports in, and the tower damage as well. Doctor didn't realize, I don't think, that he was in tower range initially. From a fortune in the middle lane in the meantime, no, never mind, it was canceled. Uh, that's uh, the bottom action happened anyway. So, But Amber Boy, yeah, diving a little bit too far, and good play by Flensmeister. Pressing that R button, porting in, and getting there just in time. To, oh, uh, just get the counter kill. Is he in trouble? He is. Yeah, he runs into Ophelia. What Ophelia is doing here, I'm sure it catches him off guard. And going to make him ask some questions, but he gets picked off. Mine is trying to get the Minotaur, okay, and that's why Glacius is so strong against Ophelia. Freezes the Minotaur forever, it feels like. And eventually at least able to pick that off. But yeah, Zlap doing some good roam right here. And able to pick up a kill himself, basically. Out of the solo Glacius. So you look at look at the GPM chart right now. Both Flensmeister and Mick a 400 plus gold per minute. At this point of the game, again, not good news for a reason. Game. It honestly feels like it's actually hasn't been too crazy, but Sync is just, I mean, they're up 3,000 gold and 2,000 experience. Only seven and a half in. It's, they actually got a pretty significant lead here. Yeah, it, it's just that if you look at the CS as well, it's in favor of Sync, and, and they just get a little bit more out of the laning phase in terms of CS or maybe a couple more kills. I mean, they have obviously the, the jungle factor as well, which is playing a part obviously near, uh, not as the same sort of impact. But uh, it's Keizu as well, though. Like, he's like 240 GPM compared to, say, Zane's 70 GPM, which is the big biggest discrepancy right now. Uh, Keizu, like, he just seems to get so much more than the, the opposite suicide. Like, he's level 6 as well compared to level 4, Jerozaya. It's just the lane phase, just think, just got a little bit more out of it. And you could say, you know, Ophelia was having an impact in the top lane, and that's why Jarrah's eyes locked down as well. But, I mean, so should, you know, so should Behemoth, kind of yeah. thing. Like, I know he's maxed out this heavyweight build, but still, you can have an impact with Behemoth. Like, as long as you hit that Fisher and you get the Fisher block, it doesn't even matter what kind of damage or what kind of rank you've got on Fisher, it's still going to have an impact of, as the block, kind of thing. So. But um, I think Reason are, are okay in where they are in this position right now. Bray's got pretty decent farm near, obviously getting close to his portal key as well. He's probably going to have it at maybe 14, 15 minutes. And that's when they're going to start you know, taking team fights. And it, it's kind of thing with, with Jerozaya. It doesn't matter what kind of farm you've got. As long as you can get like a high level with uh, Protector Charm and you get that Soul's Blessing off, like you know, you've done your job. You don't need any more farm than that. Uh, just let your cores do the rest. The one issue, obviously, is that for this reason lineup, the one in terms of who's going to get all the uh, sort of consistent sustained damage is going to be this Dr. Repulsum. And although he's got good farm, he's still fighting against a Sandwraith and a Kraken. And Midas is, is, is going, to, going to fall off eventually in the mid to late game. Um, so they really need to steroid this Dr. Repulsum to have a big enough impact to sort of carry against two heroes here from Sync. Yeah. Yeah, you know, one thing to keep in mind, though, about Midas, he did get that really big buff to his transmute, especially that's with true, the, the attack yeah, damage. Yeah, but... 120 bonus attack damage once that's level 3 ultimate. Again, he gets it at level 12 as yeah. well. So he's going to be hitting pretty hard. <laughs> Can't forget that uh, on top of his that's scaling true. there. Yeah, I, I think uh, still Kraken's going to have maybe a bit more impact. But no, you're right, though, Breaker. Yeah, I completely forgot about that. Kraken Midas will still at least have a little bit more impact than I expected him to have. But yeah. I think in the late, late game, Kraken is still going to take up. Um, because of the splash, is just a little bit more useful. And obviously the superior um, stun from release the Kraken. But yeah, no, you're right, though. Um, like, because Jero, Zyra, and Ophelia are going to almost sort of cancel each other out. Because, you know, uh, Ashley from Ophelia plus the um, Ophelia's heal is going to do the same as, like, a protective charm and inner light and mm -hmm. soul's blessing. So, it's going to come down to the cores eventually. Triple stack ancients, at least Behemoth, that's what he's going for here. Uh, going to do it successfully, Ooh. it Doctor. looks like. So, what's going on? Oh, Doctor. Doctor? Oh, yeah. Wow, at the bottom ruin. Could have, didn't catch up on the minimap initially. Is he able to port out, though? Nope. Oh, Sam oh, oh, but he gets away just before. Sam Wraith actually ports in. The Desert's Curse is oh, going to just miss as well. And Dr. Repulsor will ultimately get away. That was so close for Imba Boy. But in the end, he manages to ludicrous speed on out of there and survive. Yeah, Sam Wraith right there. He was probably hoping to, to catch him without mana, if anything. But also, yeah, pretty slow in terms of porting in on top of that initially. But uh, Imba Boy survives, and that's the good thing for Reason Gaming here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, I mean, if you saw that mechanic right there, when Sam Wraith actually ulties, when... When Doctor is just running or he's standing at the same spot, the illusion from the Sandrath ulti will start hearing. But when Doctor Repulsor actually uses ludicrous speed, he comes in sort of this invulnerable state, and because of that, the illusions don't even start attacking him. So, like, Doctor Repulsor like, ultied like maybe a hundred units, but the illusions sort of standed still because obviously, you know, he. He uh, didn't start, he stopped, sorry, he stopped attacking him. And because of that, Sandrath sort of ported late and then just couldn't get the Q off and missed the kill, unfortunately. Yeah. 
Yeah, they're collapsing onto this uh, Pharaoh and Ophelia right here. Specifically, Ophelia actually caught out by herself. Behemoth charging in as well, throws out the Fissure. Minus even joining the party, and he's the one that gets credit for the kill. In the end, they, yeah, they, they should get these creeps. I'm surprised Minus ran away initially. They might as well pick these off. Again, that's pretty important to take out Ophelia's creeps. They at least get two of them. The third one will survive, but overall, pretty good gank set up there as a team by Recent Gaming. Again, four heroes ultimately going there. Jerezaiah, the only one not there. He hits level six in the process, though. Behemoth is getting close. 1650 uh, gold saved up at 11 and a half minutes in right here. So he's going to have a portal key in ideally in the next minute or so. And uh, we'll see what uh, what impact he's truly going to have. Because, uh, again, I think Reason Gaming, they're going to really need to to start to make things happen here sooner than later. Because the golden mm -hmm. experience continues to get higher and higher for Sync Esports at this time, specifically in the hands of Kraken, and especially that Santa Wraith, and that's where it's really scary on top of things. 2,900 gold saved. I mean, so do you think it is going to be a first item null fire blade, or is he going maybe the, the mock here with the way he saved uh, gold? I don't think this is the game for mock, though, like, because I think Sync's sort of game plan is, you know, pick up the portal key on Kraken, pick up the Astral label on Ophelia, which they both got, and just start pushing down towers before maybe Behemoth gets portal key. Um, and then, you know, start taking team fights, and mock is going to do absolutely nothing for them, unless they want to take it late. Like, if they're really that scared of the team fight potential from Behemoth and Jerezaia, then I think mock might be a, a good game plan, though. I'm just assuming the game plan here from Sync is start grouping up and pushing, but they might respect the, the Behemoth portal key and the Jerezaia team fight to be too strong, and maybe Sync is going to go mock. If they are going to take it late, mock will be the best choice though because it's going to increase his farm and obviously his carry potential by uh, by quite a bit um, but then obviously it's going to re rely on sync as a team to play a little bit differently if that is the case but I, I think that it might be the best decision though because like behemoth picking up a portal key could completely surprise sync and if they lose that team fight then you know in reason i'll probably most likely in control of the game and then you know then it's reason's turn to start you know making the the plays happen for example so from what i can see like I'd assume Sarah he's going to pick up his mock actually. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess they they don't want to start team fighting because no way would they pick up mock and then start team fighting because Sandra is just going to die like instantly to the behemoth or to the Midas. So, um, yeah. Oh no, yeah. So he's going to go yeah. mock then. So yeah, this this is most likely going to sort of scream to reason. Look, they don't think they want to group up and push. They don't want to sort of team fight. So let's try and pick off. Let's try and get aggressive. Let's try and you know look for ganks because you know think they don't want to group up. They want to sort of split the map, keep on farming and. Um, I can understand what Sink's um, idea. Yeah, the you know the, the other the other reason that's kind of clicking to me too with the Sand Wraith pickup is it, also because of the idea of the the portal key counter in a sense. You know, with his ultimate, yeah, of exactly. course, it's great for that. But obviously, the Mock of Brilliance even does assist with that to an extent. So it's oh yeah, definitely. You know, perhaps that's also some idea the idea behind that. But yeah, I and mean, I do definitely agree with you as well that sure this is a very squishy build. I mean, there's no way around that. It's just pure damage and a pure Ooh. farming tool. But in the end, it's also it is a lot of damage. Damage that could really throw off uh, this Legion team off guard. But as I say this, yes, Sarah in a lot of trouble. Shockwave initiation. Sarah isn't enough. Yes, it is. So talking about him being squishy. I mean, that was a hell of an initiation. But he tries to pour it out, but he's unsuccessful because Kraken catches him. Says, "I got a portal key too, bitch." Picks him off. Glacius also going to get caught out, and he too will fall. So it was a pretty initiation. I mean, still pretty worth it, sure. But they do lose Behemoth and Glacius as a result of that. I think like I think Charlie was just a little bit too slow. Like, I think you have to realize, okay, Behemoth is dead. I'm just going to get out as well. But now that they lose Glacius as well, and Reason would be happy with uh, a Behemoth for a Sandwraith without a doubt. But um, like you have to realize that like, you're playing against a Pharaoh as well. Like Pharaoh and Bubbles are the two best counter initiators in the game. So if you go for a gank near the tomb on tower, you have to expect you're going to lose someone. You know, you blow Behemoth portal key. Like Behemoth's got his portal key. He just like uses ultimate. Like he doesn't care if he dies. But then you would lose Glacius as well, and then it makes that trade a little, you know, a little worse in that respect. I think they're still happy, but obviously they killed him before sort of a high middle lane though. Figure. Middle lane jump on to Doctor Pulse right there. Ophelia trying to assist in time cannot, however, as a ludicrous speed away going to be fine. You look at this though, more reporting in with that. It gets the actually ultimate off in the arcane vortex, and will they be able to follow up on it? No, they will not. They got a little too scared right there. It looks like Midas jumps in, puts the stun on a Kraken. The Behemoth Fissure in front, and down goes Kraken. So you can tell Sync Esports was second guessing themselves right there, and for good reason. They lose both the Kraken and Ophelia, obviously, from earlier. So all of a sudden, Reason Gaming getting some big pickoffs. Again, yep. Behemoth's portal key is definitely having an impact here. Oh, and that's definitely. what you like to see. And I love what Reason are doing as well, but they're trying to fall. Oh my god, they're going in as well. Oh, Mora. Catch Mora. Yeah. Oh. Oh. They don't see her. She was in the trees right there, and again, oh, Behemoth's going to get caught out. out. 
Like, Pharaoh's counter initiate is just godly, man. Like, without that, like, that hero kind of sucks, honestly. But <laughs> he's getting these pick offs and he's making it work. Like, you probably, you know how much I dislike Pharaoh, honestly. But I'm not a big fan of him. But, like, if you play him like this, then obviously he makes it work. But, um, going back to the point, the reason, like, they're doing exactly what they should be doing. They're saying, look, guys, Sync, they've gone incredibly greedy. They've picked up this Sword of the High from Sandrove. Let's try and force team fights because Sync, they don't want to force team fights. They want to sort of farm up, take this game late. So, reasons should be like that. Ah, Try and take it to him, like let's try and push them out of their comfort zone. But then when they make YOLO plays like that, and you know, it, it just it's, it's a lot harder, kind of thing. But yeah, I think they're doing what they should be doing though, because they don't want to take this late. Like I said, they, they're going to lose the late game anyway. Um, but now with Sound of Cry and Mock as well, it's going to be even harder to, to really sort of compete with them in farm and compete with them in the late game. So they really do need to find like, a big advantage, you know, try and get that you know, six, seven K advantage and maybe start pressuring higher ground before uh, this Sound comes out of control. But obviously, they're 4,000 gold behind, so they've got a long way to go. But I think it's possible though. Dox is looking to get active. Yeah, Ember Boy's using that build raw right here, trying to find an opening. You got Moira and Ophelia nearby, but they're going to be exposed oh as Moira God, goes in. What? With the Ember uh, Forge. It, it purges off the battle rot as well. That counts as a hero. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, That's uh, actually. Yeah. I didn't realize that. That's really big, actually. I wonder if Sand Race Ultimate. Obviously, I assume it would. I don't know. I, I, I don't assume know. it would, especially <laughs> if that idea. does. So. That's also, that's kind of a, actually a pretty good counter to the build, right? Um, yeah, I guess. Being that oh, big shockwave right there with the Korean Arcane Vortex that popped out. The unfortunate thing was uh, the heroes weren't necessarily the closest. They do get the pick off on a Flensmeister, though. That's what really matters, and they're going for more. Pharaoh jumps in, though. A big release to Kraken. Minus, however, puts his transmit out, but Minus is dropping. He is going to fall. Maybe he's trying to stay alive. He cannot do it, though. The Juke and Jiving just on now, but it still looks like Reason Gaming coming out pretty strong right here. Kraken's also going to get caught. Glacial Downport goes down. Fidget on the wrong side, but Doctor doesn't give two shits. He goes right on over with that ludicrous speed. The icon of the goddess buff also kicking in right here. And Ophelia is going to be picked off. A double tap for uh, Imbo Boy when it's all said and done. It was a genocide, in fact. Holy crap. That worked out very well for Reason Gaming in the end. And yeah, again, the behemoth initiation. Uh, I didn't think yeah, the most heroes were nearby, but I guess Samwraith actually took a good amount of damage from it. It's just it's just this Samwraith is like a... Uh uh, like a melee creep, and <laughs> he really is. Like, he doesn't do anything. Like, until he gets that mock, like, and even when he gets that mock, he's still going to be like so, so squishy. So, I mean, I can completely understand the reasoning from Sync, and I agree with what the, what they you know, decided to do. Because if you know, if they try to build tanky on Sandrave, it, it still could be a bad situation. Actually, Doctor might be in trouble. No, it should be fun. <laughs> Um, it's like dilution. It's just that reason are doing such a great job at enforcing these fights. Like they're not even getting objectives, which is the crazy thing. It's like I, I think that could be maybe to the, the part of Sync maybe trying to like take these team fights because if Reason want to take team fights, right? The only way they can effectively take team fights is if they you know try and force objectives. Like they try and force the towers, and then it, at least it's going to force a reaction from Sync. But Reason are fighting in these so weird places that Sync they're saying, oh yeah, you know these guys are overextending. Let's try and fight them. But they don't realize that they've got a sort of the high on on Sandro that just does nothing. But, um, yeah. Oh, I think that's, that's just that's just a vision. Gonna be fun. Is Sandro porting yeah. in anywhere? No. No, 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 no. It's just for vision. I think okay. he's scared of dying again. Um, so. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it, it's it's just that reason are doing a really good job of trying to take these team fights where Sink are just not ready to fight at the moment. They need at least strong head on on Sandro as well as his mock and he's not neither either. So. Yeah. You know. Look at Midas here again. Has that portal key? Another 1,900 gold saved up, make it 2,000 plus. He's finishing off the ancient. So intrigued. I mean, this is a hero that actually, you know, something like a spell shards. I don't think would be out of the question, honestly. Behemoth, by the way. Uh oh, Moira, you are in a lot of trouble. Behemoth is right on gonna, top. If he goes, oh, if, if he goes near those neutrals, he's gonna like blow shockwave and just yeah. Kill him, Oh, no, he's not going to follow him, though. He's going to keep scouting things out. Imp is how much longer? Yeah, oh, he's going to do him. Set, please do it. Oh, that would be big. Him. Before they die, though. Before they die. Ult yeah, there we go. Will it be enough damage? I don't know if it will be. Oh, A couple of the creeps were oh, dead before. Yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah, now yeah, yeah. Behemoth he's, he's is in die. trouble. Sandwraith. Oh, maybe not, actually. Sandwraith actually got on out of there. But here comes Pharaoh now. Cuts him off. <laughs> Oh, that was yet. so. Cl I think he should have portal keyed, like, because I think like at least seven or eight creeps died beforehand. Yeah. Um, before that went in, but that would have been such a big play, man. That would have yeah. been so big. But <laughs> I like the idea, but uh, just a, a little, little greedy. Little a little bit lackluster, unfortunately. So, going back to Midas, okay, he actually goes to Tablet of Command here in the end. So, sticking to the utility route rather than trying to assist with some more damage. Uh, Imbavoy, oh, there you go. Picks off Insania. So, that's obviously Dr. Pulsar 
10 Icon of the Goddess charges. Again, for 21 minutes into this game, this is a huge start for a Dr. Repulsor. Very impressive indeed. And you made that point last game. I mean, Flensmeister, great Dr. Player, but Emma Boy also a great one himself and showing that off right here. Mickey gets the bottom tower kill. He's going to pull in fairly. He wants the tower kill. Will he get it? Yes, he will. Well played by Emma Boy once again right there. Uh, yeah, what was I going to say? I was gonna say Minus. Minus, that was it. Uh, tablet, yeah, yeah, so um, he picked up the tablet because he's going against Kraken and Pharaoh. Like, you have to pick up tablets in that game because, you know, otherwise they're going to have too much impact. So, I like the tablet pickup, but going back to the spell shots at him as well, I think that's a really good item pickup. I've seen uh, Root of Z pick up spell shots. Um, what's, what's the new item? Well, not new. Uh, spell say, Sunder? Yeah, Spell Sunder as well. He really likes that item as well. He huh. likes Spell Sunder on Rift Walker as well. Uh, I think, like, he did the math on it, and he, uh, apparently it does, like, 3 or 4% more damage than Spell Shards. So, I'm just, right. like, I, don't know, I, I don't actually know that, but uh, talk about him. <laughs> uh, these, is there any hero there? No, it's a dissolution. Uh, I was going to say, <laughs> am I missing something? But, oh, Glacius, meanwhile, he catches somebody off. Pharaoh off to the side. Puts the freeze on now, but he did just use his portal key, so going to wait a couple more seconds here. Eight more seconds on the Shockwave, by the way. So they're definitely in pretty good position to fight. Dr. Pulsar also coming back in. He's got some good vision, though, here from Sync Esports. More are even going in with that Ephemeral Forge LE. He's going to scout it out. Uh, yeah, again, that exposes, as we see right there, that's Glacius. Just, that's a really good hero, actually. It's a very good hero <laughs> against Vildra and many reasons in general. Yeah, I think teams might be realizing that more and more here as things move on. So... Oh, strong it on on Kraken. This might be the time where Sync actually going to try and start taking team fights. Yeah. Because Hellflower reason, also just finished on Feral, by the way. Okay. Gonna um, that's going to be really useful against Doctor Repulsor. I think. Yeah, I think Sync are ready to fight right now because Kraken, when he has that strong head, there's nothing that Reason can do to stop him. Like all the damage here from Reason is magical. All of it is magical. Yeah. Um, and obviously Doctor Repulsor. Uh, if he gets Hellflower from Feral as well, he's going to die. Like if he doesn't have the protective charm, so. Yeah, this, um, without a doubt, Reason can't go high ground, though, now. They might be able to force a tier 2, but I think Sync will even defend that, though. And I, I think if Sync can survive the next 10 minutes, I think they will be fine in this game, because Sand Rape is going to get too big. Reason had an opportunity, but um, I don't think they've, they've secured enough of a lead to really have an impact. <laughs> we'll have to wait and say, oh! Pharaoh swinging and a miss right there against, uh, trying to jump in. Now, Behemoth, nice protective charm, though, comes out just prior. Sanrith is, he can actually port in, he does. He goes on a Behemoth, trying to chase him. Now, doesn't have an fire blade, oh. though. Yeah, but he's going to be able to port a QA. Will it be enough? Yes, oh. it will! Oh, my God! The release of Kraken was a perfect placement, but it just didn't go off in time. And Behemoth makes the escape right there. So, well played by Nier, able to get away with that portal key use. And <laughs> apparently need a toilet break after that one. Maybe uh, yeah, too was, close for comfort there. That was actually pretty crazy, actually. So what happened is Jirazai protected from the behemoth, and then Sanrath actually sort of uh, deserts cursed him, but obviously he didn't know damage because it was magic, and then he was able to get his portal key off. So I thought he was for sure dead there, but Jirazai as well was just making plays. Beak. That they were. So here we got uh, about 23 and a half minutes in, 12 to 9, hero kill advantage in favor of Reason, and they got the golden experience lead too. So yeah, yeah I definitely understand what you're saying about uh, needing, you know, about 10 more minutes maybe. If it keeps the farm going on Sand Wraith, the uh, sink is going to actually overall be in a pretty good spot. But Reason Gaming definitely has a lot of momentum themselves. They're going to have their own health flower on Doctor Repulsor, and he's a hero that continues to snowball most certainly. Midas also, we're going to get some really strong answers as far as what kind of impact is Midas going to have in a mid tier to late tier game perhaps as this game continues to pick up again. He's farming very well, 470. 15 gold per minute currently as he has another 2400 gold saved up so again with the tablet understandable as you pointed out but where does he go from here you talked about possibilities of spell sunder spell shards i mean yeah i mean i think i can't remember exactly what the um math was but i think i think i remember root or uh foods and science like, like if they have like 1500 hp or over 1500 hp like it does like Three or four percent more damage than spell shards would, like because it depends on the current HP kind of thing. I don't, I don't actually know the exact math, but I remember them saying kind of it, um, and that's why it always goes on um, Rift Walker as well. It really does like the item as well. But I, again, the, the problem is I mentioned it before though, is that this recent draft is incredibly magic damage oriented, and obviously Shrunken is now on Kraken. Sandrave is eventually going to go for one as well, and then what do they have to offer? Like. I mean, I, I've never seen Midas do this kind of weird build, but I mean, if you think about it, though, obviously we talked about the 120 bonus attack damage now, and it's all attacks with um, with people that are affected by the Midas touch. Like, you could even think about going, like, saying, I mean, he's a strength hero as well. Like, you could even say, go, like, Insanitarius, Elder Parasite. Because I think, honestly, like, <laughs> it sounds incredibly troll, right? And it no, probably is, I... but... 
if you think about it though, obviously with the attack damage or the bonus attack damage now, and him being a strength hero and he got those recent um, buffs, like, I, I think they're just going to lack a lot of physical damage because none of them offer it until Doctor gets like six slots. So. I, I, I think there is something to what you're saying. Honestly, big shockwave initiation once again catches both, and both Feral and Ophelia die right off the bat. Kraken comes in, but he's way too late. Soul's Blessing already used Kraken. Gonna get away now after popping his shrunken head, though, and uh, that's gonna be dangerous for Sync Esports because this could be a free tower push. And that was without Dr. Pulsar, who's just pushing in the bottom lane. Gonna get the free tower kill. These shockwave jumps, man, again, where we've heard so much hey, about this near behemoth. <laughs> but he's showing why there's been so much talk and even bans against this behemoth. Definitely this game. 3-3-7, uh, three, three and seven, not the sexiest stat line, but he's had two huge initiations so far in what's, uh, what's still kind of an earlier on game. So another tower goes down. They're even going to possibly get a third one here. I mean, that just goes to show you how much mu much can snowball as a result of a couple hero exactly. kills at this point in the game. And, yeah, that's going to be a third tower kill. I mean, I'm sure they're going to fall back after this, but wow. A lot of yeah, momentum for reason. Uh oh, oh Kraken is Maybe. thinking about it. Ephemeral Forge, here we go. Arcane Vortex. No, she goes down. Oh, she got it off just before. Sam Wraith, he does pop the illusions. Will he go and release Kraken right on top of it? Dr. Pulsar able to get away, though. Glacius and Behemoth, however, will be picked off. I think the rest should be fine, though. So they do get a couple of casualties. But Reason Gaming still ultimately pretty happy with what happened right there. They did get credit for the tower kill as well. Uh, I mean, they're still chasing, but I don't know. I mean, Doctor, of course, yeah, he should be fine. He should use his cues to stop the portkey from Kraken, because Kraken's got it up in one set. Uh, yeah. Okay. Good to go. JK. Um, yeah, good team fight from Sync as well. They obviously realized that Soul's Blessing and uh, Shockwave was down, so they were like, yeah, let's just try and take a team fight. I think if Reason got that team fight uh, unhinged, I think they would have been in a very good position, because they would have had maybe 8, 9k advantage, and that's where I think actually they might be able to take it. But now Sync are taking R Roshan. Uh, sorry, Kongo, this is going to be actually a big deal because Sandrove doesn't have his strong head just yet, or he will actually have it after this. But now I think Sandrove is going to be in a very, very nice situation right now. And reason I, I don't think they can kill Sandrove twice now after his strong head because they have so much magic damage, and after the strong head, like it's going to do nothing to him, to Sandrove yeah. eventually. That's going to be a free Conger kill. So, yeah, Sink Esports able to capitalize in the end of. Ultimately, how how good of a fight that was for recent gaming, and he definitely getting a token of oh, life. Pretty big deal, and they catch Dr. Pulsar as well now. Oh, he's Hellflowered, he's so dead. he's in a lot of trouble. I, they can't get there in time, though. That's that's definitely a downside affair at the same time. He's great at jumping in like that, but his team doesn't have the, the reach a lot of the time, as we kind of saw right there, as he yeah, does. Trash. So. Yeah, <laughs> well, there you go. Back to being <laughs> trash. We'll see you now. Um, <laughs> no, I'm joking, but... but um, yeah. Yeah, um, I, I think actually, although Sanrave had the Mighty Blade um, before, when he was taking Gonga, and then I think he had like 3,000 gold saved, I think actually you could have maybe made the argument that he should have actually gotten a uh, Nullfire Blade before the Shrunken Head, because he's got his token now, so if, even if he dies, like I don't think he's going to like die twice as long as his positioning is good, but now with Shrunken Head, like, I think they might have issues killing people. Like He won't die regardless, but I think you could have maybe made the point, oh, you know, pick up Nullfire Blade because you've got, you've got token anyway, so it doesn't matter if you die kind of thing. You don't need the Shrunken Head to be defensive if you've got, like, it, you almost act as your token is your defensive item. Obviously, only last once, but, you know, you're going to buy a Shrunken Head eventually, but not the biggest of deals. Um, I think they can carry on, like, fighting regardless if they have an L5 Blade or not. I just think maybe Sieging High Ground might be a little bit of an issue for Sync, but they've still got other towers they need to take down, so, yeah, yeah they're in a good position. And this is where it gets a little bit scary for Reason, though, now, because it's getting to the point where, hey, how do we deal with Sand Road for Shrunken Head now? And they don't have an, they don't have an answer, really. Unless oh. they can jump in before they uh, or catch him before Shrunken Head, which yeah. is a possibility. So. That's what I was going to say. I mean, they do get a Hellflower. They do have Midas, who's actually getting a Sheepstick, is going to be the route there. And, mm. you know, that's never that's a bad good. item, of course, especially in a reasonable situation like this. So, uh, going to be having that here shortly. Now, Sync does push the middle tower. That's the first middle tower, though. That's only their second tower kill of this game, 28 minutes in. Sink Esports only has two tower kills. That's pretty crazy in itself. Samrath, is he porting it somewhere? He is. They catch both Behemoth and Midas. Will he be able to chase them down? The question. Oh, now, nice transmute really nice. from Midas. Going to at least get him out. No. Release the Kraken hits. And he does fall. Behemoth, on the other hand, uh, he should be fine. Yeah, they're not even going to chase him down. They figure he's already out of there. So uh, he's going to be good to go. But Midas goes down, and this is now going to be a top tower push coming out from Sink Esports right here. And they're probably going to take the top tier 2 most likely as well, because Midas won't be... They don't think they want to use a buyback. Although, they did force a reaction out from Sync. Yeah, so um, it was only more and fairer, I guess, so... 
I think Stink can probably take this tower top. Oh no, they're gonna back off. So actually, yeah, just nice split pushing there by Ember Boy. Actually, forced out two TPs from mid. So defended their tier two tower because of that sort of little bit of a split push there from Ember Boy. So nice yeah. play. He's going initially beat actually. Oh my god! Holy crap! Look at that damage initially. Arcane Vortex gonna be used. A will save Pharaoh. Saved it. And no, gonna be fine, but will it be enough? No, pay him with another huge shockwave catches Fair off guard. More is barely alive. Will stay alive in the end. Doctor thought about it. You know he did, especially with that double damage rune, but did not want to risk it either. So they're happy with the one kill. Again, as pretty as that shockwave was, it just pretty much guaranteed the Pharaoh kill. And not much else in the end. So <laughs> they they get another kill though, and uh, back to farm we go, it looks like, but you do look back at the Santa Wraith. Uh, token alive about a minute 45 remaining now, so they might not necessarily be able to use this token the most aggressively here with that said, matter, like, but uh, yeah, just having it though is good for them. He goes an Ice Brand, by the way, yeah, not that's usually what, a fan favorite. That's why, I mean, I, I don't think Ice Brand, like everyone gives Ice Brand a hard time, but I don't think Ice Brand is, as, is as bad as people sort of cut out to be, honestly. But I think in this game, there's definitely cause for concern though, because like, th there's no no fire blade, like. I, like, I really thought they picked up Sandrave just for the Nolt Fireblade, and they haven't picked it up once. Um, maybe they're scared that Sandrave is going to get bursted down. Oh, Sandrave only comes out. Yes, he is. Behemoth gets caught by the Mana Center, but he's able to port out and will survive in the end. So, not the biggest deal right there. Getting away middle lane, Midas. No, he's got a portal key, and he's going to be able to use it in time. So, yeah, Sandrave trying to use this ultimate aggressively. Can't really do so, though, as they're just a little too quick, it seems like. You're on a recent uh, side. But, yeah. So the, I guess they're kind of scared of Sandrife dying. Oh my god, they're going to get Charge actually missed initially on Eclatius. However, the splash attack proves to be too much in the end, and uh, they will get the kills. So yeah, Sink keeping it going, but now Dr. Pulsar flies in. He catches more pretty easy right there. But at one cost, Pharaoh now hit the creeps. The Mummy Walls goes oh. off, though. He has a charm, however. Hellflower is applied. Oh, He's pulling it in. Release Kraken comes out. Can he get away? He's actually just holding his ground. He could use Ludicrous Speed. He's going to use it right there to chase him down, and down goes Pharaoh. In the background, Sandrife, he may end up falling. He will. He had the token, though. Gonna come right back up, of course, and now Dr. Pulsar might need to be a little careful. However, he's a hat trick in the background, picks off Kraken, and he should be Can fine now. In fact, he may go for another kill. Hopefully, it was right into him. He pulls him in, down goes Ophelia, a quad kill. Oh, we're gonna see even more than this. Sandwraith, he's chasing out with the shrunken head, but Sandwraith and Dr. Pulsar are gonna go ahead and Dr. with the icon buff right now. I would definitely give it to Dr. Pulsar. He has a hellfire as well. That shrunken head's gonna wear off. This could possibly be an annihilation if Sandwraith's not careful. He goes for a minus, though. He's just trying to juke and jive over the hill right here. Dr. Pulsar is out of mana now, however. He just barely has enough. Sandwraith pops the ultimate. And that should be enough for the getaway in the long run. Wow. Wait, he put it in? Oh my god, it went for Midas! The green is real for Flitzmeister! <laughs> and now he's in a lot of trouble as a result of that. Oh no, Doctor's chasing. So yep. Dead. He's going to chase him down. What the heck? Oh, uh, it doesn't what? count as an annihilation, but hey, might as well be for Imba Boy right there. What, what was, was Flitzmeister thinking? I don't know. Even if oh, he gets the kill. He's still dead, He's yeah. still probably that dead. That was... Okay. That was... Look at the goal. Like, he's got 5,000 gold now on Dr. Pulsa. Doctor has 22 charges on his icon of the goddess as a result of that fight, too. <laughs> That's oh ridiculous. And he's the guy that they jumped initially as well. Yeah, 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 definitely. It's that Jero's eye, though. Like, they jumped onto him. They, they hellflowed him. Jero comes in with the protective trauma and then sells blessings, and then Sink like, oh, what do we do? We don't have yeah. an hellfire blade, so we just, like, sit there for five seconds, do nothing kind of thing. And this why I don't like the ice brand is he needs, the, he needs an hellfire blade, like, without a doubt. Like, after that team fight, I can assure you, Flynn's Mice will pick one up. Um, maybe uh, off the crossword. I mean, but, you uh, seem like it, it's, it's like, again, the reason for the same way to pick, I mean, sure, good portal key counter, too, and everything, but... The no fire blade. It seemed like that was one of the yeah, obvious reasons, if anything. Yeah, the fact yeah, that he yeah. doesn't have it yet, 33 minutes into a game, when he's farming 445 gold per minute, that's pretty bad, honestly. I mean, I, I, I'm honestly shocked by that, especially the fact that he's chosen to go an ice sprint here over something like yeah. that no fire blade. So. Uh, yeah, this seems like it's a pretty awkward spot to be in as you know, oh, look at that right there. Good old flash show as a result of that quad kill. All Dr. Repulse are out, all avatars. 90 minutes, 40% gold coin flash show. Holy crap, that's a good chance to get your favorite Dr. Avatar right there. Anyway, oh. uh, Santa Wraith, he's supporting in. Yes, he is. Oh, goes for Glacius for some reason by himself over here. <laughs> I guess he was just warding, but he gets picked off, and that very likely could be counter warded now. Mm hmm. Result. Obviously, it doesn't really matter too much, really. But um, yeah, I think Reason are actually in a decent spot, honestly. Um, 
I really thought Sink were going to start start slowly taking this though, because they've got Sandro Strong and they've got him on Marker Brilliance now. He's slowly getting there, obviously Strong and Ed on Kraken, but without a Nullfire Blade, Reason are still winning these team fights because of Jerezire. Um, and now they've got pretty decent farm on Midas. Oh, Midas mid lane though. Yeah, can he jump away? No, he can't. The <laughs> you see both the Hellflower as well as that uh, Mana Sunder ability able to lock him down. And pick up the kill onto him. So good catch there. And again, he has that sheep stick, but can't do much with it if he's dead. And he does not have a buyback. That's true. So this is a good chance now for Sync to get a couple of impactful tower kills. Uh, you see, all secondary outer towers are still up here. More uh, gonna elemental or ephemeral forging, I should say, and kind of just toy with them a little bit right there. Uh, has a portal key, by the way. I think she got that recently. So. Yeah, I just like that as well, because if you can get like big, because now you can sort of sit in the back and then use Arcane Vortex if you need to, or like Mana Sunder obviously works with the FM on forwards as well, so just nice little synergy there. Um, so that one pick off lost them two towers, they won't lose high ground though because Midas will be up in time. So a little bit more map control for Sync, like Sync at the moment they just want to delay the game I think, because I, I think they realise that, you know, as long as we take this, you know, 50-60 minutes, I don't think we can lose. We've got Sandrape and Kraken, um, and although Dr. Pulse is incredibly farmed now, he does slowly taper off in the late game. Um, I mean, Sandrape is going to out-carry Dr. Pulse in the late game, so, yeah. yeah. Sync aren't too bored. <laughs> but they need that Nullfire Blade, man, they really, really do, because yeah. without it, I think, at the black, if... At the moment, like as long as team fights go according to plan for both teams, Reason will still come out ahead because there's no Nullfire Blade here from Sync. Yeah. When they get a Nullfire Blade on, on Sandro, that's when Sync slowly start taking uh, control of team fights. And I think that's the biggest thing because when you start taking control of team fights and you have the late game, then there's almost no way you can lose kind of thing. Um, yeah, I was also going to say that. Let's uh, also look at some very big items coming up here on the Legion team, specifically Behemoth. He's going to have a Resto Stone here in the okay. near future, and I can only imagine that's going to be so powerful. Sand Wraith, I think this might just be a scouting one. Oh, no, he's going to port top lane, actually, and try to... Oh, did Glacier already TP? Oh, yeah, he did. I was yeah, going to say, what what happened there? But yeah, I was going to say, he already sorry, gets away. Uh, anyway, so, uh, but yeah, Restel Stone now, I will say his mana pool isn't the biggest right now, and he definitely needs a bit of mana uh, to it's use his abilities, though, but he does have a Glacier, uh, sure. But uh, still, that doesn't necessarily maximize his mana pool. It, it does, kind of. Like if he if Glaze just starts maxing it out, like if Glaze gets level fourteen, then that's an extra what hundred mana. Well, yeah, hundred mana, which it's sure nice. is nice. But I, I still think he could use something like a grave lock at those. Where I'm getting at. Just yeah, that mana pool or steam more. boots. Or steam boots. Or steam boots. Yeah, you need to go striders. That's true. Um, but we do see middle lane right here again. Failed raw onto Midas actually trying to act like he's not here, but. I don't think Sync's really too interested in starting a fight. I mean, Sam Wraith Ultimate is down, of course. Uh, Reason Gaming very aware of that. and They're going to go to the Congor pit now. They are Legion. Uh, there is a ward of sight here from Sync that will spot this. And I think it might have also spotted that Veiled Rot usage. As well as the Haste Rune just picked up by Dr. Repulsor. So, Sync Esports, they got plenty of information to work off of right here. That uh, they need to be a little bit worried about getting jumped, but Doctor doesn't give two shits. He goes right in on a Doctor onto uh, Sandwraith right there. Out comes the Arcane Vortex though, stalling initially. Glacial downpour after the fact. The Behemoth Shockwave goes out. That's only his first of one. Obviously, he doesn't have the Wrestle Stone yet. Fissure Stun trying to block them off. So actually, Legion Tinker to start falling back. Glacius already picked off Doctor Pulsar. He's still plenty good to go. Honestly, he goes back in. In fact, on a Kraken, he wants a kill on a Kraken, and he will get the kill on a Kraken as a result of that. A Bloodbath Stream coming out, but however, his teammates still being chased down. Jerezia still has Souls Blessing, by the way. Nice mana Sunder, though, on a Jerezia. He cannot use his ability since already saw a great lockdown on him. They burst him down after the fact. Dr. Pulse, though, he's still standing his ground. Pops a struggling head, but he needs to get the hell out of there, maybe. No, he's thinking about staying in. Now he's getting away. Again, the Icon going to regen a little bit right here, but I don't think it's enough to ultimately go back into the fight. He ran past As, the regen. Oh, the regen <laughs> just popped up, yeah. That wow, be, that's so he, unfortunate timing. <laughs> he could have, if he picked that, that could have been a like, complete turn, I think, there. But, that I mean, could have possibly, did buy back. yeah. Mickey did buy back, I guess. But. Behemoth did so survive, Sink, too, by the way. He's up here. Sink are going to take Congo? Mm. No. I'm surprised. I thought they would. I guess Doctor, no. Doctor's still up, I guess. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the reason why that team fight went so well, though, is that they killed Jerozai without him using um, a good protective charm or Soul's Blessing. Um, because of that, obviously, they won the team fight because they still don't have a Nullfire Blade. Yeah. So, yeah, I think they're, they're still doing it. But 
you, you start to slowly see though that Doc Repulsor, like, when they've put, got the Shrugged Heads up and when they're going right click to right click toe to toe, like Sandwraith and Doctor Repulsor, Sandwraith is still doing a lot of damage though, like, Sandwraith only 200 damage right now and Doctor Sage did a lot more right click damage than, than him, but it's obviously the, the Dissipate and the Deserted and obviously uh, Sandwraith having higher attack speed, it's just slowly becoming a, a factor. It's fine now, but when Sandwraith gets 6 slotted, that's when obviously it gets a little bit scary. Because at the moment, like, Doctor is like a, a full item ahead of Sandro. But obviously mm. when it gets into the late game, they go, they're both going to be equal. So, yeah. <sighs> Scary news. Yeah, um, so, Frost of Skull yeah. is finished on Sandro. So, again, he still uh, insists on prioritizing that, finishing it up. Again, it does bulk him up uh, quite a bit. And it is a solid item, but it does mean that no Fire Blade is going to be that much more delayed. Which we still expect again. <laughs> it's just hard I to believe so. that they're not going to get an offer blade against Jiraiya here. But he has to get one next, though. Like without a doubt, I just if he doesn't get one, I'm just I'm going to be completely muzzled. But yeah, I, I do understand the Frostwolf skull pickup though, because although he's got shrug and head, oh my god, bottom lane, Pharaoh Does he jump. Pharaoh, he's in trouble. Hellflower coming out. Doctor Pulsar used a lot of mana to get here, but it's enough mana to s insist on getting the kill. How many char twenty eight charges now? On that I could I cannot stress how crazy that is for a real game. I mean mid wars would be one thing, but this is a, a winner bracket finals match for Cycle 8 Diamond Division and he has twenty eight charges on that freaking icon kind of the goddess. That is crazy. Uh, and now they're going for Congor. You see Santa Wraith, I don't know if he's gonna pour it in, just more sort of scouting. Yeah, he's thinking about his top. Not gonna do it though. However, Moira goes in. No, that's just the illusion. And just scaring them off. It, it's tough as this reason there to, to really understand if they're actually going in or not. It's just so chaotic. But in the end, they realize they're not. And back to Congo they go. I okay, they so, so they're going to pick Congo. This is token of Doctor. Is this, is this Bananas as well? Uh, well, no, no. I think this is the second Congo kill, if I'm not mistaken. Pharaoh's up in sense. They're killing um, this quite slowly. They, they have a very, very I mean, Behemoth poured it back to stop the top push. And they kind of, they've been going oh back. And they're not really they're, they're fully in. committing. They're, they're in. Dr. Pulsar, he jumps Moira right off the bat. That wasn't real Moira. She goes down. Kraken, however, gets the counter call to Jeraziah there. And now back on the Kraken, though. Dr. Pulsar goes in and Kraken falls. Dr. Pulsar just too strong, man. He is just way too strong right now. <laughs> and especially yeah. with no Sand Wraith initiation. They can't do much about that. So. Man, I they're, they're having trouble killing Doctor once, like with two is, but this is such a big uh, token now for Doctor, because now they can, they actually have ways of seizing the high ground. Um, and although, you know, they're doing okay, because it's getting to the mid, it's probably like the mid-ish late game right now. Um, but I still think reason they do need to somewhat try and pressure um, Sync's base at least, because they cannot really take, like, <laughs> when Samurai picks up a Null Fire Blade, these team fights I think are going to be completely different, I, I really do believe so, so I think reason they need to push, they need to try and force uh, an advantage while they have it. Oh, you got Santa Wraith, the sheep stick right away, and he has a fossil score, remember, as well as a shrunken head, but he can't use it right now. Shock in the back row, locked in Ophelia, will he get a heal, purge off, no, Santa Wraith, he ports, but he, he's still still alive, actually, the port pack from Ophelia. It will ultimately save him. They got the kill out of Behemoth now. And Dr. Pulsar, he's going to try to get on out of there, which, again, he should be able to do. As he is losing mana, though, Midas in the background. He's needing to continue to get away with the Elemental Warp Chase, though, from Moira. Puts the stunts on him with the Shards of Harkon, as well as the Mana Burn. And down they both go into Glacius and the Midas. So a couple of really big kills right there. Mickey did have to use a second and final buyback. Uh, Ooh, but uh, no, no Sand Wraith, I mean, the fact that he lived, that was a huge purge from Ophelia, or I should say a port back from Ophelia. No buyback on Behemoth. This, mm, I guess they're fighting, they're, getting, they're fighting against Token Docs Repulsor, though. So yeah. yeah they're they're going to back off. It's probably the it's wise too decision. Risky. Um, yeah, I think, re man, this game has been back and forth. Back. Like, I've been like, oh, yeah, Reason are going to take this game. Oh, no, no, Singer's going to take this game. <laughs> no, I, yeah. It's still times this that I'm not sure. Like, really. I think I still think Reason, they, I think they need to make some kind of uh, object or take some kind of objective with this token, though, because I think after the next token, though it falls down, Singer are going to be in a position where they're going to start taking these team fights because Nullfire Blade should be up on Sandrake by that time. Kraken looking towards go to his demonic breastplate. Um, and, you know, Dr. Repulsor. Although he's you know, doing a lot of work now, the right click potential and the late game, I just I, I don't see Sync losing it honestly, unless they're unless Reason are really far ahead and they well, don't have any objective to sort of. Yeah, I mean, you can argue about all about the late game honestly in the end as far as like lineups and whatnot. Feral, by the way, that protective melody 
it's like, or the charm, I should say. He's like, what do you do against it? You really can't do much in that case. So, easy kill for Dr. Pulsar. But again, though, you can argue about that all you want. Yeah, I think it's, yes, on paper, sure, a late game definitely in favor of the Hellborn team, especially yeah, I mean, the same But execution is what it really comes down to. It, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, having true. a hero You're like 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 uh, Jerezai as well. Is Samrath going somewhere? No, he's just harassing. Uh, having a hero like Jerezai as well, especially when you still don't have a no fire blade, is a very impactful hero all throughout the game. Even with no fire blade, he's still very impactful. So uh, I, yeah. I, I think it's safe to say this is going to be a game of execution here, more so than what, well. what on paper it says. So. Um, and also, like, Doc's Repulse is obviously completely useless with Stronger Heads, or when the enemy team has Stronger Heads, but Kraken only has 6 seconds Stronger Head now, and Seraph only has 7 seconds. After that team fight, you know, that's Doc's Repulse's team fight to be, to be one kind of thing. Like, he can, yeah. he can have his way with Sand Raven Kraken. Um, and for so really, sync they need to finish the team fights quick and fast. Dan Wraith jumped once again off the bat. Will they have the counter play? There comes the Storm Spirit. Hellflower is up. Behemoth, he's waiting. You know, a port back on his Wraith. Doctor Stone flying in. He stuns uh, right there. Gets a kill on a field. Look at Doctor Pulser flying around left and right. Oh Thirty-eight charges on that high cut of the god. That is ridiculous. Protective Charm comes out. The tower is going to end up falling. Sam Wraith can't even put it back this time. No, he can't. Now, cover the RJ Vortex comes out. Pharaoh, he goes in, but he also gets caught in that crack. It does pick off Midas in the background. Midas buys back immediately, by the way. He might post his back, and we'll see. However, Dr. Pulsar is still going. Very strong air flying around left and right. Pharaoh is in trouble. Sam Wraith, he buys back in the ass. Dude, Pharaoh goes down, though. Kraken doing a lot of work, though. He gets a hat trick in the background. Now, Dr. Pulsar, all of a sudden, know, he's man, somewhat by himself, but he's still doing some good damage. It's Enough it's damage. It's Kraken it's is going to die. He does have the token still. So so he's gonna fall, but he's gonna come right back up with full life and full mana. Kraken's dead. No buybacks. Is Reason Gaming doing it right here? He picks off more of Sand Wraith. Pops the shrunken head, so again, not much Dr. Midas can do currently. And in fact, Midas is gonna get locked down to death once again for the second time in this fight after the buybacks. And Dr. Pulsar by Behemoth, look at him. He's waiting patiently. He has a Resto Stone still. He's going to be going in. Resto Stone. The Fissure Stone. He's not going to shock him. Just he's got a mana action. The mana center comes out. He can do it now. No, he cannot. And down goes Behemoth. He should have done it prior to going in. So he can press R initially. He did not, though. And now Dr. Pulsar is by himself once again. 44 <laughs> charges on that icon. He wants it. Oh, the mana center. Oh, this is big. He pops the shrunken head. But is Emma Boy really going to get cut out here? Okay, there we go with the initial. The catch up with the Wrath of Pharaoh. Is he going to end up falling? In comes Jerry Sides. One clinches. The hail bomb. The bait's real. Samrath's getting turned. <laughs> Samrath is going to fall. Pharaoh's going to fall. What a bait. An immortal streak for Emma Boy. Double tap oh to finish it off. <laughs> oh my he's god. What a finish. Dr. What? Repulsor is off the charts right now. <laughs> this Wait, is the this craziest is you, Doctor game. This is, oh my God. Like, this is why you first picked Doc Doxa. 23, <laughs> 1, and 8. That has to be one of the greatest stat lines we've seen ever in On Tour. Holy oh crap. <laughs> what is this game break? I don't even know. He's going to catch uh, oh. Kraken here as well. Is this going to be another kill? RK Vortex comes out. How is this fight still not ended? It feels like it's been going on for an hour now. Dr. Repulsor, he's putting some good damage into Kraken. Can he charge away in time? He should be able to. Maybe. Oh, barely alive. The Shrunken Head, of course, saving the day as well. But now Dr. Pulsar, did he finally overcommit? He might have finally done it. Out comes the Mana Rift, or whatever it's called, the Mana Burn. Down he finally goes. And honestly, that's a big kill. Because, I mean, yeah. sure he has uh, He doesn't even have buyback. Oh, no. Oh, did Reason uh, Gaming just throw it to an extent? They didn't even get the racks. Uh, the, the, la the lanes are so pushed in, though. Like, but there's no way that Sync can get to their racks in time. Like, Dox is going to be up in the next six seconds. He got, he got way too tunnel vision, yeah. though, especially oh, no, at the end. Yeah, he definitely <laughs> overcommitted. But when you are when you literally just got 10 kills in a row, like, I guess yeah. it can happen like that. But the biggest thing, though, he ran out of mana. Like, if he has continuous mana, like, he can do that the whole game, kind of thing, or the whole team fight. He was um, up to, what was it, 50 something charges? God. I don't know, man. But he has 42 charges now. Like, so, and the so max you lose is 8, I think, so he had 50. Oh I believe God. the max you lose is 8, yeah. So 50 charges he had before he died yeah. right there. Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> this game has been ridiculous. but um, Yeah, obviously a little bit of an extension. They did not get the rack, which is the biggest thing. But, I mean, Frank, look at the buybacks, though, from Sync. Yeah, no that's the biggest deal. On Sand Rafe, one buyback on KZ, one on Insania, no yeah. buybacks from Mickey. So, I mean, I think it's safe to say Reason are obviously in a great position. But, <laughs> Frank, Frank, at last.
<laughs> Look at Sandra's arms. <laughs> Where's he, the no fly he, place? He got it. He got it. It's going back to base. Oh, he's got it. Right, he's I got believe it, right? so. It's just a matter of putting it on the stash. There we go, yeah. Okay, he's got it now, <laughs> but it's too late, man. It really is too late, it feels like. Obviously, it's better that he's got it than he doesn't have it, but... I mean, this I don't, I don't know if it's too late. I mean, sure, they don't have Bibles, no, no, but no, no, they no, still no, have no, all their yeah. racks up. I mean... I, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's too late in terms of, like, oh, they're going to lose now. I just think, like, it's just... He got it a lot <laughs> later than he should have. <laughs> yeah, like... That's for sure, yeah. Oh, man. Okay, so... The next thing, the biggest thing is going to be who gets the next Congo. Like, if whoever gets, I think honestly, the person who gets the Congo next could be winning the game. It's, it's that big of a deal. Like, if Doxa gets it, I think they're going to win it. If Sink gets it, I think, you know, Sink is going to win it. Cause, uh, because Sandrove does do a lot of damage to that, and he has ways still with the Jerezaya. And Reason, I'm surprised Reason want to sort of try and force this, though. I guess they know that buybacks are down for Sink. If they can kill Sandrove once, that, that could be the game. So. Yeah. Oh man, this is going to be come down to execution. Also, well. too, Moira, we've definitely seen a big impact of that Mana Sunder as well. Mm, These yeah. last couple of fights, too, Mana Sunder is a huge ability. And again, against Jerezaya, against Behemoth, against Doctor, even. Very, very powerful. So here we go, though. This could possibly be it, if anything. Thank Pharaoh jumps in the back on a great initiation on Midas to start things off. He's going to be locked out. Souls Blessing popped very quickly right there. Behemoth in the front lines. He wants a Shockwave. He's going to use it shortly here, I believe. Doctor Pulse in the meantime, though, he gets a quick pick on him. The Shockwave goes out, but he dies shortly after. A two for one exchange. As Midas and Behemoth are dead, but Doctor is still Doctor Pulsar after all. He goes back in. Oh. Arcane Vortex will stall him initially. Pharaoh is very low, though, coming out of this. He's going to die shortly after, most likely. Uh, he's still alive, actually. Finally finishes him off. Meanwhile, in the back one over here, you do see Jerezaya. No, he's still alive, actually. He does stay alive as uh, Glacius got picked off. But Doctor Pulsar is still doing his thing. A double tap coming out. It's him and Santa Wraith. Crack here as well. Jerezaya comes in with a heal bomb to assist a little bit. He does have a protective charm. Puts it on as well. And Santa Wraith and Kraken, yeah, they need to play very safe. And I think Emma Boy also kind of learning his lesson from last time that he does not want to dive like crazy here, like he was doing before. Just get the racks, if anything, man. The, the fact that these are still up is just ridiculous for how long they've been fighting here. Oh, man. Finally, gonna. Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> Vulnerability comes out. And they're gonna barely stay alive. He goes back in, he gets the kill, but at one cost. Oh! That, was so that is that was pretty messy. huge. It died just before. Whoa, the stun insane. happened. I, I still don't think it would have been a kill by any means, but it was I've, pretty good timing maybe, there maybe in the right. end. That so, but still, hey. that was insane. Though. They finally got um, the melee racks. Finally, they got the melee racks. But like I said, it, it doesn't really matter. I think the game's coming down to team fights. Like if Sandrafe will die um, with, without having buyback, I think that's going to be game. So Congo here is going to be the biggest point of contention here for both teams. You know, because if Dr. Pulse can pick up Token, like, I, I think he can just almost silly strong ahead, or even maybe, he's, um, I think Icon is still really useful because he's got 48 charges, so I think he could just drop Shrunken. It's, it's a 5 second Shrunken anyway, though, and he's got Repel. Like, Token is so much more important. If Dr. gets Token, I think he can go completely ham in the team fights and just kill everyone. Um, but if Sanro gets it, then he doesn't even, obviously he doesn't have a buyback, so like, he's, that's what he needs. Yeah. So, Congo right now is going to be the biggest thing. Uh, reason, I think they might even have the slightly better Congo advantage killing team though, because, you know, they've got Behemoth. Like, that last team fight, the reason why it went somewhat bad for Reason though, is because Behemoth died before getting off anything. It was a great initiation from Keizu. He oh, he didn't use Hellfly. Yeah, he died afterwards, but so did so did Behemoth. And obviously, at the moment, Behemoth is offering a lot more than than, um, than this Pharaoh. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, and Vision is going to play a big key part. So, really nice Ward of Revelation here to sort of spot out the Ward from Insane. Speaking so, of Vision. <laughs> It's real raw right here. They're trying to get so around there's, it. There's no vision here for for sync at the moment. He, okay, so uh, Insane does have two more wards. Um, so that's going to be. I think you should place it on the high ground here. Like um, I can't know. That was just warded. Right next that was to just counter yeah. that, was, that was just counter warded. It's Insania. almost like he's trying to bait it out, yeah. if anything. But maybe. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Like, he's yeah. not near his team though. Like I, I, yeah. like I can't ping. But you, you see where Conger is, right? Like if you see the right to him, there's a little hill. Like you need to place it there. Yeah. Like, cause then, then they don't, they can't see it unless they have flying vision. <laughs> it just got to be this one. <laughs> it's like, wait again. a second, I thought we did this. <laughs> if 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 Isania puts the ward there, Doctor Pulse literally has to fly on top of it to see it, or they have to bring a quarry <laughs> over. Look at the damage um, done, by the way. I just happened to go to that chart right there. Thirty percent oh done by God. Doctor. Twenty-two percent done by Isania. Yeah, uh, not surprising. This is, <laughs> this is why you first picked Doctor, like with boys and girls. <laughs> this yeah, is this why is he's such a whole big. The potential that is there. Yeah. This is what it's like, man. Like, 
Oh, man. A anyways, uh, again, speaking of it, too, he still has both of his buybacks. That's the biggest thing right now. The fact that he yeah. has both of his buybacks, and as a team, they're looking good on that. Again, going back to that, San Wraith and Kraken out of buybacks, two of the most powerful heroes you can arguably see on Sync Esports as far as the slate game goes and having their buybacks. So, yeah, that, that if anything, is going to play the biggest difference maker here. But uh, Sync, obviously, okay. for good reason, still going to put in a fight here. And actually... Oh, there! You see on the mini map, they're thinking about it. They're like, "Hey, doctor's there. Let's go." Uh, never mind. <laughs> Just right. So let's talk game. about items. First of all, he's going to buy everybody's struggling head, which is definitely the right choice to make. Oh, Sandro, <laughs> he's going to get pick off. Well, oh. Glacius is. Yeah, I mean, it was, right. for some reason, he's oh, yeah, still it's there. Glacius. It's like, <laughs> eh, not a big oh, deal. Oh, Behemoth. Oh, Behemoth. Just TP down. TP down. Okay. Gotcha. Um. Yeah, late game items here for Dr. Poster. So, but Rebuy's strong in it, which is the right choice. He might go in there. He's, popped, he's got Veiled right, actually. Can he find anyone is the question. Oh, yep. Insania. He's going to go for the Insania pickoff right here. Pops a shark in the head. Ophelia's like, I'm healing you up as much as I can. Will it be enough storm spirit? Wow, they're buying a lot of time. That uh, oh, Mana Sutter also doing work as well. Bad. Arcane Vortex. Yeah, he's buying so much time right here for a scene to come in. Finally going to be picked off. Here comes the Shockwave, though. And Ophelia dies shortly after. But now here's the fighting power. Kraken and Sam oh, Wraith. Dr. Pulsar, he's still trying to survive. Yeah, he's very low on mana right here. Jerry's is not nearby, at least for the time being. He does have enough. Another Shockwave comes out, though. Being with just saving his teammate, if anything. And now, no, that's Midas, actually. Jerizai is dead currently, so... He's still dead, though, I think. Must lie. Oh, dodges that charge. Sheepstick comes out. He's Minus. in a lot of Minus is here, Minus. though. Minus. They're going to set up a turn, possibly. See, everybody, look at that damage coming out right there. Getting those auto attacks, man. Bops that transmute. Doing some good damage, but he'll just fall mind. back from that. Just saving his teammate was the important task there. And you look good at the middle lane in the meantime being pushed in, so they're going to have Oof. to do something about that. Santa Wraith, he's not hey, boarding, is he? Oh, yeah, they find Behemoth. Yeah. yeah. There's a free kill there. Um, Behemoth does have a buyback though. I almost want to say, okay, by the way, talk about Sandra right there real quickly again. So his item choice again. Finally with an old Fire Blade, it's only level 1 but still has it. Um, he's going Firebrand though into, I, I'm guessing, a Geometer's Bane. I, I honestly think though a Brutalizer makes just so much more sense here. They need that yeah. lockdown I feel like. In fact, Kraken gets one himself as I say that. So at least they have that. But yeah, Brutalizer also on Sandra I think wouldn't be the worst idea. But choosing to go the Geometer's Bane though here. Yeah, I think the Geos is going to be just useful for extra illusion power. But then, I mean, but then obviously you've got to think about the Shockwave from Behemoth as well, which sometimes isn't the best. You don't really want to stack illusions because they do count towards um, the effects of enemies uh, for the Shockwave. So. Not 100% sure that. I think Brutalizer would be good though, because like there's about three or four times where I've seen him ult me onto Behemoth completely out of position, and then Behemoth will just TP out. If he gets a Brutalizer, then you know he can maybe proc a bash and then kill Behemoth because of that. Yeah. But then at the same time, Brutalizer are not the most luxurious of items. 3,100 gold compared to Geo's, which is what 5.6, 5.5.1. Which obviously like two thousand more gold, so in just terms of price, it's going to offer obviously a little bit more in mm -hmm. terms of late game presence. Um, yeah, I mean, just going back to other items as well. I think honestly, Doctor should um, sell the icon and maybe go um, Harkon's Blade, honestly, because the Shrunkers now are what five seconds on Kraken, five seconds on Shrunk on Sandraf as well, and they do not have the farm to rebuy the Shrunken heads. So I think Harkon's could actually play a big part in it. I mean, his regen won't be exactly the same, but in terms of raw damage, that's what he can dish out in terms of... Um, Who, Dr. Pulsar? Yeah, yeah, I think Harkins What, play what would he sell, though, if he goes hard? Oh, it's actually, he's going to jump Pharaoh right here. That's yeah, going to be a free kill. <laughs> he hits the creep. Oh, my, maybe not a free kill, actually. Storm Spirit comes out again. He dove pretty far to the base. Big shockwave, but he dies shortly after. A lot of shrinking heads were possible. Maybe not the biggest shockwave in the end. Jerez is on the run as well as the rest of the team. Heal Bomb comes out. You see him right there now. Uh, okay, there was, uh, there was somebody top of that's an illusion, actually. There's a Mana Sunder on Jerezai, and that Mana Sunder really is doing some work this game. And uh, he gets picked off. So Dr. Pulsar is like, what do I do now? <laughs> His uh, team's getting picked off around him, it feels like, constantly. Behemoth did buy back, by the way. His second and final buyback. I'm yes. surprised Doctor didn't try and fight that, though. Yeah. Like, Played it very safe. They were just chasing that Jerezai. He, he had repel on himself. Like, I'm just surprised he sort of didn't want to fight it, but... I'm still surprised they haven't tried to focus down this Congo though. They're, they're more focusing racks than they are Congo, but mm -hmm. I mean they do have the, they have the ones with the buyback, so I guess that's okay. I guess. Yeah, he's gonna jump in right here once again. Very quick stun right off the bat. I think those shards of Harkon. More uh, gets ported back just before. Down goes the tower though, and you see our Legion team is.
Gonna restart retreating at least to uh, kill that illusion. Remember, they changed it to where you cannot attack it for the first couple of seconds. So if you're wondering why they're not killing it initially, uh, that is no longer possible. It's invulnerable while it's channeling like that. But they kill it right after, and uh, that's what matters. Now you see a rebuy of the Shrek Cadet on Kraken, by the way. So you talked about that. It was down to five seconds. Well, back up to ten seconds okay. for Kraken right here at least. I'm surprised. Uh, I guess that extra five seconds is probably more than setting the vestments and going, what, sad? Each maybe, yeah. or even shoot stick perhaps, or even maybe the resto. Like we talked about resto cracking before. I think in this game it might even. I think actually he should go to resto when he sells the vestments. I think because they've got shrunk head on Doctor Pulse and they've got repel. Like there's no way they're gonna kill him outside of maybe um, superior um, stuns like shrunk and ultimate for example. So I would like to see the maybe the resto from Kraken or maybe Savage or Rift Shards if he wants to go more carry and help out Sandwraith in the right click department. Now, going back, talking about the start, so what would you sell? Uh, the icon. The reason Aww. I know it sounds really it's, it's, the reason being although fifty the, uh, the, charge he's, icon he's, of the goddess. I know, I know his region is ridiculous, but I, I, he has trouble killing people. It feels like like the only way he kills people is if the team fights are over thirty seconds long, which to be fair they have been, but. <sighs> I don't, I don't know, know man. That's, that's, that's well, a tough maybe, no, call. No, no, no. I think maybe Shrunk that's shrunken though, if he's got repel. But then that's just going to get no fight yeah. off. So. Shrunken's a little I, I too risky, I think. You, you, yeah. you, this is almost like a max. I, I guess the more I'm looking at I mean, that that's the one that you could say. like, I mean, I, Honestly, even the Frostfield played. I mean, I know he got that pretty much most recent, but it's still one of those cases. Like, Is that really <laughs> doing you the most compared to instead of a damage item? So. But, but then he's fine against like, a lot of right click physical, like the, obviously yeah. the breastplate from Kraken and Sandra. Uh, I think if it's going to be anyone, he's, it's going to be Icon, and he's just got to sort of fight through. Oh, all they're going to jump in right here on a crack in. The Hellflower is applied. He can't shrink it off the bat. As a result, you do see the Legion team jumping in as a hole. RK Vortex finally coming out. Sam in the back. He picked off Jerisaya as well as Glacius. So Dr. Repulsor, he only has two teammates left with him, and they realize quickly once again they need to get back. Was there another buyback used? I'm not sure, actually. But anyway, Sync Esports, all five are up for the time being. That's what matters. And they are once again going to chase them back. Jeez, Sync is just too strong right now, apparently, to break through in this base here. Well, because what is breaking? Look, they need to either kill Kraken or Sandwraith. And it sounds you know, quite simple enough. Yeah, all you got to do is just kill him. But then you have to think about Aphelia and um, Moira are the ones sitting behind Sandwraith. If you go on Sandwraith, you just have uh, Aphelia's Judgment plus Storm Spirit, and you're not going to kill Sandwraith because you can get brought yeah. back to base. And if Aphelia <laughs> dies or doesn't have that combo, Arcane Vortex is used from, uh, from Moira. So, what what actually has to happen is Doctor Repulsor has to kill Moira or Ophelia in the background. But you go on Ophelia, Moira helps the Ophelia out with the Arcane Vortex. You go on Ophelia, also you go to Moira, and Ophelia does the combo on Moira. So it's it's really hard to actually fight in Sync space. Like I've talked about it before, Sync have one of the best, if not the best, high ground defense um, sort of strategies and sort of playstyles ever. Like they know exactly where they need to be in terms of positioning. They know exactly what they need to do in the team fight as well. I think if every reason are going to take a team fight, it has to be outside the base, and the only way they can really force that is if they, you know, try and force a Congo fight, for example, because they have their superior Congo team fight. Mm -hmm. They've got a Behemoth and they've got a Jerazai, all great AOE. However, Sync are the ones that actually are pressuring it. it looks like. So. Oh, they again got the Arcade Vortex running. In fact, Envious was even picked up by Pharaoh, so he's good to go as far as scouting things out. Uh, we're seeing a lot of this, though. Again, actually, Mora ports in with the illusion again, scouting out to what she will see at least a couple of heroes coming out from a recent game, and that's good information because as you can see on the mini-map, they immediately start falling back to the top lane, realizing that possible push is going to be happening here soon. So once again, a recent game, you're going to try for it. Again, they have that middle lane doing work in their favor right here. They got the melee racks down, but still it hasn't proven to be enough just yet as we're now 62 minutes into this game right now at this point. So... Uh, Sync Esports, they're the ones, though, dealing with uh, the lack of buybacks. Granted, Behemoth is out of buybacks now, so Reason Gaming oh. starting to feel that a little bit bottom oh. lane. That was so oh. close. Was that Sandwraith? Yeah, I think it was Sandwraith. Is that him or Pharaoh? It was Pharaoh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it was Still, Pharaoh. though, that was a close call. <laughs> close call. Just a little bit too okay. late, so. So, like I said, Reason are still having the issue of breaking high ground base because they can't kill Sandwraith for Kraken because of Moira and Aphelia in the background. So they have to force the team fight outside of Congo. But when that happens, oh, he, he does pick up the Harkons. But oh. oh, here we go. Samuri jumps in, gets a quick kill on a Glacius. I don't know if he's going to get more, though. Behemoth ports out. Everyone else does as well. And that'll be the end of that. So, yeah, Samuri trying to catch them. If anything, check for Congor. And somewhat oh, correct. 
Is there but we are both wrong, Brokey. Yeah, he, he sold, sold the Hellflower. Um, That's interesting, actually. That's I was, he still pulled a half of us, so I'll take that as a half victory. I just didn't get the which one he would sell. Yeah. Right, but, um, yeah, and I think it makes sense, though, particularly against Sandra, who's... Oh, she has probably brought a strong hit, though. I, I guess the Harkons can be really useful against killing the Ophelia and the Mora, which is probably the, actually, the, the bigger issue, actually, at the moment. But I mean, Sandwraith now is practically 6 Lloyd. Maybe you could say, maybe he needs to sell the Brutalizer. But even then, it's like... It's hard to itemize, really. Because like I think in perfect scenarios, I think actually Sandwraith would like to have a Wingo. Because then then it would force uh, Doctor to go a Savage. And then it's like, well then what do I sell? Like, I mean, like, we're having that issue in that talk again. So, in the late game, itemization is obviously very important. But it's very hard to say which one's the superior one. In the meanwhile, reason it's taking Kongo, though. So. Now, Congor's, uh, yeah, Congor's falling right here. I mean, Sync Esports, they got five seconds on the Sand Wraith Ultimate. Honestly, it's, I, I think they're going to probably use it here shortly, if anything, just to scout it out and kind of make uh, Legion Team chaotic. Mora, in fact, porting in with the Illusion initially, going to scout it out first. <laughs> and so now they know that something's up here, obviously. And Moira was in the top lane and she just... Yeah, no, the range on that's ridiculous at level four. Uh, it's all the 5,000 range. Yeah, might as well be global, honestly, at that point. So, Behemoth, though, leading back the way. They're going to get Congor. Again, he has the Samurai Ultimate, but... Oh, man, this is going to be so close, actually. Oh, they're jumping in. Doctor jumps in the background first. He goes Samurai. He's locking him down right here. Meanwhile, down here as well. Samurai did pop his ultimate. Will he go in? No, he won't. Soul's Blessing was used already. Not much initiation, though, so maybe a little bit early right there. In fact, Behemoth gets caught. Behemoth, he doesn't do a damn thing in that fight. Not one, not two shockwaves, not anything. Doctor, poster lockdown. Doctor, man, the falling right here. He already popped a shotgun head. He's going for a kill. He won't even get that. The mana center was too strong. And Sync Esports wins a big fight right here. Doctor does have a buyback, but Behemoth will remain yeah, dead. They're going to get a yeah. quick Conger kill. And that means bananas and token. Boy, oh boy, this oh game is just continuing God, is to be so this. close and exciting. They actually give tokens to Kraken and bananas to Vera. Wow, I'm really surprised. Because if Sandrape dies as well, I think I think Reason still can win the game, though. If they, Sandrape if they does kill a full Sandrape. inventory, though, man. I mean, I don't think there's, you sell anything in this case. Well, if you kill Sandrake, I think you win the game because he doesn't yeah. have a buyback. So I would have sold Brutalize, I think. Or not even sell it, maybe just give it to someone else That's to hold. That's drop it at least. Because, like, yeah, Brutalize is a big pick-off in pick-offs, so they can't TP away, but Brutalize in a team fight, I'd still value token over that. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there, there was people, like, suggesting, this is kind of a hindsight thing maybe, perhaps, but uh, possibly should have looked to sell his boots on... Uh, Dr. Repulsor rather than mm. selling the Hellflower even. Yeah, I, that's not a bad idea actually as well, to be fair. But then he doesn't have a TP slot, which playing against Sync or playing against well, any late game team, yeah. you always have to be careful with split push or getting backdoored or whatever the case may be. Post haste is a strong item to I have think, in this case, yeah. Yeah, and it, it's, just, it's just one of those things. It's like there is no, this is the right item to go kind of thing. There, there, there isn't one. Like there's so many good possibilities or things that you should go or things that maybe you shouldn't, but. Ah oh, man, this is um, this is a tense game on the list. Yeah, it's just continuing to go on and on, and, and you know it seemed like recent gaming, it's especially once the immortal popped up for Doctor Pulse and everything, it seemed oh, like they were gonna start pulling did. away. But Behemoth is now also in trouble, and I, I keep going back to I I know obviously there's a lot of good things going on for both these teams, and especially Sync Esports now. But honestly, I think the MVP right now is Mora. Like that Mana Sunder has just done ridiculous. Ridiculous yeah. work this game. Their arcane vortexes have stalled so many fights and as well. The forges as well like yeah, scouting and, and exactly. Yeah, Formal Forge has also been a pain in the ass for a recent game to deal with. So uh, he's really we're, we're getting a great idea of the true. I mean, we've already seen glimpses of it, but honestly, this is this is showing that Mora should honestly be a top tier support in my opinion, as far as agree, interest agree, for definitely. the hero. So definitely, definitely having a huge impact here and. And uh, they're feeling that, but Reason Gaming, with that said, they still have a very farm doctor. I mean, they still are the better in the buyback situation. Another Brutalizer coming out. Pharaoh even gets one here. <laughs> they just want to look down on this, on this doctor, yeah. but the last, like, three team fights that Sink of Tukun, they've actually ignored the doctor completely until, like, after the sort of team fights already fizzled out. Like, they killed the Pharaoh, or they killed the Behemoth for the first team. So, uh, sorry, Samuel doesn't actually go Wingbo. I mentioned it a little bit before, but he doesn't have a no fire blade. Like, now... He sold the no fire for that, yeah. Oh, I, I don't know if that's worth it, but, like, it's <laughs> a really good item, because, obviously, Doctor Repulsor now either has to 
forced to buy a savage and then what does he sell like again we go back to that issue what can he go I, I think he's feeling a lot better though since they, they have three brutalizers so it's like sure we can't yeah. purge off charm but we can still lock him down with brutalizers now soul's blessing is a different story but it's, the, but it's the soul's blessing i think is yeah. a more bit of a bigger issue than because you know doxa has shrunken actually top lane someone's dead for the kill oh he needs to be careful though okay he got ported so oh they're, they're doing that are they okay <laughs> they're Porting Sandwraith as soon as he ports in with the illusion, <laughs> and then so he goes for a quick kill, and if he doesn't get it, he doesn't get it. But that's an interesting right. tactic, actually. So the way it looks like is that I don't think Sync want to push, honestly. From I, I th because they're not pushing with Token, and Token is down to 130. I, unless they're going to group up now and start pushing, then they're not going to pressure high ground. I don't think. I think they're waiting maybe for reason to overextend completely because the last couple of teamfights, like I said, Sync have actually won them because of. They, they, they picked off Behemoth, they picked off Jerozai, they've killed everyone and left the Dr. Pulsar to do whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. Which I think is the right thing to do because I don't think you can actually kill this Dr. Pulsar because he's got Shrunken, he's got Protective Charm, he's got Soul's Blessing and obviously he's a Dr. Pulsar. Unless you can get like a good uh, mana sunder, I think it's best maybe just to just focus the enemy team. And like I said, like he doesn't do the, the, that, most, that much damage really. Like, at the moment he's got DD, so yeah, he's going to do a lot of work. But without DD, like he's not the biggest of threats, honestly. Like It's in the late game now, and this is what we were talking about. He does fall off quite a bit, because the best thing about him, obviously, is probably his mobility and his sort of damage he can put out. But it's a lot of magic, and yeah. magic damage doesn't... I, I too, think but. you are getting to the point where, like... At first, I wasn't so sure, but even with a 50 charge, right now it's only 42, but I say only lightly, that's all a freaking crazy amount of charges. Not, you could say yeah, something like a Savage so, Mace in place of an Icon yeah, of Goddess here, because, yeah, it's their their raw so, damage output so, is definitely showing they don't have here. It. Like, who else is going to dish out demo? Who's yeah. going to dish out? Look, wait, look on the damage tab. Like, it's Dogs are all sold away. Like. And that's, what, so and that, that's a lot of magic damage as well. Exactly. <laughs> that's the majority so. of magic damage. No fire blade picked up by Midas. It's now that's funny. We see an no fire blade in the game, but not even on the team that you would expect. <laughs> Instead, I don't actually know this, but I should know this. But does no fire blade get rid of mana sunder? Uh, oh jeez, I, I don't know. I, I think it should. Yeah, it is a debuff that's applied. So now, if that is, I like it. So th see, now I would wonder though. It does it actually give you your mana back right away if you if you remove it, or would it still regenerate over time? I mean, that could play a role too. So I don't, I don't play Mora. Yeah, I, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I I no tell clue. You. And it's one of those cases, like as, as far as how it mechanics should, usually it work, it makes, should you would think, but yeah. It makes it makes sense. Um, I'm not sure. But even that though, it's good against the Hellflower from Pharaoh, so I, I still like the pickup there. Like Midas isn't like I, I talked about, but he maybe going like into that serious like Elder Parasite and go right click, pre which I think looking back on it, I think you should go because look like Midas, what is he doing this game? Like five percent damage, like it's like nothing really. Um, but at least he's being useful and trying to help out the Dr. Pulse, so obviously no Fireblade is going to use that. So, right, so how do either team win this game right now? <laughs> uh, reason? They have to kill Sandwraith or Kraken, which is now a possibility because they don't have Soken. But, you know, Kraken's getting tanky, then obviously you've got the Ophelia and Moira. So they have to either find a pick-off outside, outside of the base, or somehow kill Ophelia and Moira and then uh, start uh, killing the Sandwraith and Kraken and hope that they don't kill Reason before that happens as well. And for Sync, I think they need to um, kill the rest of Reason and just leave Dr. Pulsar to do what he wants, really. Because, like I said, he's not... Oh, built bomb lane! Oh, they are going to jump right here. Is that, is that a real Sandwraith? No, I was going to say. Okay, yeah, he did his thing again. We're ports back. Right. So even if he went in, he would have been fine. As far as... Well, actually, that's why they got the no fire blade. <laughs> that's oh. why they got it. Yeah, now that just hit me. It's, you know, we've talked about that before. A port back from Ophelia. That's uh, that you can purge it off, and clearly when they're trying to abuse that now, of uh, sending in Sandwraith. Uh, but we've even seen earlier on this game where he's in the front lines, he gets ported back though, so he feels safe. But yeah, having the Nofra Blade will definitely change Ooh, that Pharaoh? safe idea. Pharaoh? Pharaoh, he knows he's in a little bit of trouble. Pops on my wall, so, and it's enough to escape their ultimate. Behemoth's heart, by the way, picked up on Kraken, man. Yeah, they're not he killing Kraken. No. <laughs> not when Ophelia and Mora is behind him as well. Yeah, he's good to go. Um, so... For some reason, like I said, they've got to uh, somehow kill Ophelia and Mora in the background and then proceed to kill Kraken and Samurai, which I don't think they can. Like, I think at the moment, I don't, I don't think Sync are going to lose team fights unless they misplay. But I guess we'll have to wait and uh -oh. see. Is that Mora? 
That's a fake Mora. They're going to jump on the middle and on a Kraken right here. That is not the target you want to go for. In the meantime, Mora pops the Arcade Vortex. Shockwave in the back off Behemoth. Doing some lockdown, but no, he gets stuck before he can finish your aim. And he gets a second Shockwave off. But Shrugganets were off as well. So minimal damage. So far, nobody did on the helper side make that one dead on Ophelia. However, Behemoth, Midas, and Glacius all picked off. It's just Jeraziah and Dr. Repulsor right now. And Jeraziah very likely going to fall victim right here. He has a heal that just doesn't matter, though. Dr. Repulsor off to the side. Mora is just dealing with him in the meantime. So he's going to port back to base. Another just cleanup from Sync Esports at their base, basically. And I don't know if Reason yeah. Gaming has much more fighting power left in them, honestly. They, they, they don't. They don't. It's got to the stage where Sync are too strong in team fights. Uh, so he, just, he does the Savage breaking. So he solves the icons, buys the Savage. Yeah. But no buyback on Behemoth, no buyback on Midas, buyback on Jiro Zaya, and no buy So it's 2v5 in this, 2v4. Can they defend? I don't, I don't think they can. No token or uh, not. So this is going to be the, the final stand almost. Yeah, he's got the Savage Mace finally for some raw damage, as he pointed out, but just too little too late. That expression definitely fits here once again. Jeroziah, he buys back. There we go. Dr. Repulsor is like, I got to try something. As our base is starting to die right now, they get the easy tower kill, though. They jump him. The charm is saving him somewhat. Again, they do not have a no fire blade anymore, so... It just doesn't matter though. There's way too much damage from Sync Esports, especially with only minimal okay. heroes up, and they get the rack. So again, we're not over yet necessarily, but you could definitely feel Sync Esports has definitely taken control of this game. At I this really point. disagree with um, Doctor Paul Simon because the reason being is that okay, right? So reason they can't win team fights anymore. Like well, that last team fight was clearly evidence of that, right? So that's what we know from now on. After knowing after that last team fight, reason they did exactly what they needed to do to win the team fight, but even that it wasn't enough. They yeah. killed Ophelia, they killed Amora, as I said, they needed to do. But then by that time, Sandrath and Kraken killed the rest of Reason. Uh, Doctor Paul still survived, but like I said, he, he's not been a big impact in this team fight. So. So reason they have to win the game without team fighting. So how do they do that? They need to split push, and they've probably got the one of the best heroes to do that. So he needs to. This sounds ridiculous, Breaky. I don't know. We've never seen it done before. But he needs to buy uh, flying couriers and needs to has puzzle box minions on either side of the lane to split push. He, yeah. he has to win the game by himself. Well, th this not is a game team. that yeah that would require no, something like, like that. I know this sounds like really weird and wacky, but this is the the length what he needs to do to win the game. He, for, this is why I said I, don't, I disagree with him buying Strong Enemy, because now he doesn't have 3,900 gold. Yeah, this, um, is, this is really weird, too, seeing a, seeing a hero like Dr. Pulse in this case. Ha, he hasn't even used a buyback yet, and yet we're saying his, him and his team is actually in the worst spot now, yeah, despite no, the other team not fun. having any buybacks on three different heroes, including their Sand Ray. So. Like, Sync don't even need the Congo anymore. Like, obviously, that's going to help, and of, of, by all means, take it, but they don't, they don't need it now to win Team first. so... Reason should they need to split push? Like I said, they need puzzle box on Imberboy now, and they need to just split push the map, top, bottom. Um, Sync, they have decent ways of dealing with it. Unfortunately, they've got Pharaoh, which is a great way. Obviously, they've got more of the Kraken, and Sandrath can instantly be there as well. So, it's going to be a hard, hard way to do it. But they need to win the game without team fighting, yeah. and split push is the only way to do that. They got to just wrap their way, uh, and puzzle box is one way to do that. It's so crazy to think a 28, puzzle three, box. and 11 Doctor Repulsor. <laughs> is on the verge of losing, but that's exactly what we have here. Sync Esports, they got the momentum yeah, out. They're, right now. they're doing right Congor, as you said, yeah, but yeah, here we right go. <laughs> Just try it. Right try for something. Yeah, Sam Rathy nice, pops nice, his nice, ultimate. Nice, nice. Is he actually going to port in? Oh, they do. They will jump, actually, uh, right there. As uh, nobody died. Just hit the... Wait. Oh, he... What was that? He got a Resto Stone all of a sudden or something? Anyways, he goes back in right here. The locked in with the Arcane Vortex on a Dr. Repulsor. Everybody's on top and he pops the Shrunken Head, but he's being locked down now by the release of Kraken. Finally gets out, but it might just be too late. There's too much locked in on him. He has very little mana left. He's going to end up falling right here. He can't even get a kill out of it. And I think no CK Esports may have just done it right there. Yeah, no buyback. Yeah. I, I would have to double check what the what the heck just happened there, but Samry just double ulted. Did he... He like... I, I honestly, I yeah, don't even got, know what he's, happened. He's got, he's got, he's got refresh courier, man. He's got refresh. Oh, on the courier. Yeah, what yeah, the refresh courier. <laughs> Yeah, man. Look, 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 the sync know what they need to do. Like, they've got puzzle box on their crews. Oh my and this gosh. Is what, this is what I was trying to say at the start. Like, reason they had the right idea. They knew they had to split push, but they didn't do it. That, well, that, that, you, you, mid, Garrett, mid, that, that caught them off guard, man. I mean, there's no way they would have expected that. Yeah, Who would yeah, expect yeah, a refresher yeah. on a courier? <laughs> that's ridiculous. Not reason, unfortunately. Sync yeah, that's, Esports, that's, next I level, man. I think that's game, I think. I love, I love late game. I love late game because this is the crazy stuff that's that can happen. That's crazy stuff <laughs> like that, yeah. Yeah, this is why I love late game on. It's wow, so the, the rest of Stone Courier ultimate. I mean, because again, yeah, they figure, okay, no Samurai ultimate. We actually could push this pretty aggressively now. 
Nope. There's a second Santa Wraith ultimate all of a sudden. Yeah, the puzzle box as well. <laughs> and the no puzzle box. Casey and I think the game's over, by the way. Sync Esports, they're pushing it yeah, in. That it. should possibly do it. Game number two in the series is going to go to Sync Esports, it looks like, over Reason Gaming. What a fight. What a game. One of the better ones we've had in a long time, no doubt. But that will officially do it. GG, well played. Sync oh. Esports are going to the grand finals for the eighth straight cycle. The seventh cycle, they'll be coming for the winner's bracket. And every single time before, they've won the grand finals as a result of that before. So, ladies and gentlemen, Sync Esports, 2-0 in the series. Again, though, what a game number two we just had right there. And what a finish to that game number two as a result of it as well in the end. Holy crap. I mean, there, there's really so much to talk about, but... It just, again, Mora, in my opinion, still deserves that MVP award if we just give him one out here it's just as far as his impact. But I, I will say, too, I mean, it seemed like Behemoth, every time he yeah, tried to have yeah, a huge impact, he really didn't do much. And Well, he did, though. Like, the first 20, 30 minutes, he was the early, reason why sure. reason were in it. Like, he was the reason why they were... Like, Sync were looking to sort of take the game, I think, like, at the start. And then Reason had some insanely big plays. They forced the... Or they forced the team fights because Sandwraith went the, the Mock of Brilliance build, which, again, I think it was the right choice. Uh, but they obviously were weak in team fights. And near Behemoth was, like, giving them <laughs> ridiculous initiations. And then they eventually started winning team fights. And then re Doc's repulses went ham in the team fights. But, again, they were winning all these team fights, breaking, but they did not get any objectives. They got... All the insane am amount of like team fights and all the domination that Dr. Pulse had, they got one Rex, or one yeah. melee Rex out of all of that. And that is why, you know, we, we as casters drill in about you have to get objectives, you have to get objectives, because if you don't, that's the stuff that can happen. Unfortunately, they got too late in the game, and Sandroth and Kraken just outcarried Dr. Pulse, and it got to that. I mean, it was an incredible game, but. Wow. Oh, man. That's um, so true. Yeah, yeah. You, do look, you do think back at that. As sexy as an immortal streak is and everything, the fact that they got tunnel vision as a result of all of that, too, really uh, played the big difference maker here in what was game number two and ultimately the series, definitely. I mean, just what a game, though. Nearly 80-minute game, I believe it lasted, and and uh, just uh, just so much back and forth, a lot of action. Again, we had a hero that got an immortal streak that went 28-4-11, and 11, a Dr. Repulsor, and his team ended up losing the game in the end. That does not happen often, if really ever, but it did happen here for those reasons. So, Sync Esports, again, going to the Grand Finals, and, uh, well, they'll be waiting comfortably yet again and being played later on in, in uh, the later match tomorrow in what will be that best of the five. They'll be up one nothing though, of course. It's so funny though how game one was a complete stomp, and then game yeah. two was like. Well, again, one of the best yeah, we game talked I've about that. Seen. It's, it's a so lot fun. Of that like, just, that's yeah. laning. It was just laning, obviously. Like how game one, the laning phase was just completely abysmal, and Sync just capitalised on it. But in game two, obviously, it was. That's the kind of games you expect against Reason and Sync because Reason are they're just been playing so good recently, and um, yeah, arguably, you know, they they should have took that game. I think there was a slight couple of um, late game decisions from reason I think maybe cost in the game which is surprising because I mean we think of late game decisions and we think of like reason like, I think reason was the team that came back like 40,000 gold with Moon Queen at one time do you remember I, can't uh, remember. It, I, I don't know if it was it there it might have been them actually it, yeah. it, was, it was reason yeah I, I remember yeah. specifically um, yeah they came back for like 40k deficit but yeah a couple of things like no puzzle box I know this sounds like it's a really small thing like in terms of how used it is in normal games but in late games that's how important it can be like the puzzle box couriers like the split pushing not not pushing out lanes all these little things um does add up eventually in, in sync they were just they were just too hard to handle unfortunately but great game and um i, I don't know man i, I think recently are going to meet in sync in the in the grand final like i i just don't think nullstone will be able to compete against reason if reason are on form like like this in game two yeah. but i guess we'll have to wait and see but i, I just I, I don't see it like n neither tree or no i don't think can compete with reason right now yeah <laughs> i just don't see it jeez what a game again but uh ladies and gentlemen sync esports uh they're making a statement here to finish off the season again they've already they, they've already earned and claimed their trip to thailand as a result of being first place in the standings and no matter how this cycle would have played out they had that anyways but clearly still showing that they're here to play they're still here to take this cycle and take home their fair share of the prize pool as well as uh lead that momentum into what's ultimately going to be a great, great World Finals event uh, eventually. But Reason Gaming, sure, they, they fall short here, but again, they're still